If you're looking to build an e-commerce store, you're on the right place because I'm gonna show you how easy it is to build it. In this tutorial, I'm gonna use AngularJS, TypeScript, Node.js, and Express.js, and we are gonna do Stripe payment integration. We are gonna use Angular Material Component Library, and we are gonna use Tailwind to help us to start that material component. And this tutorial is only for teaching purposes, so we are not going to be creating the real product, but we are going to use Vector API in order to help us. The prerequisite for this video is to have no JS installed on your machine. To have Angular fundamentals, go check my course on YouTube if you're not sure. And to create an account on Stripe.com. It's free, by the way. And that's all. Let's start coding. Go with Sloba. Okay. On my desktop, the first thing which I want to open is my terminal. So right click and I will open up the Git bash here. You can open up the terminal, the PowerShell, whatever you're using. For me, it's Git bash. Now, the first thing that you want to have is NPM installed. I assume that you already installed the NPM. Now let's install the Angular CLI. This will help us to create new Angular project and it will help us to create new components, services, whatever we need inside of our Angular application. So in order to install it, run npm i for install and angular forward slash cli and the version is going to be 14.2.1. Make sure to install the exactly the same version, otherwise you may run into issues during the project development. Installation has been done, let's clear this. Now we want to create new project. It's really easy to install the new project once you have angular cli installed. So run the command ng new, and now we need to pass the name of our application. I will just name it store. And I want to pass a couple of parameters. So I want application to create default routing for us because we're gonna have two pages. Then I want to remove the tests. So add a flag, skip tests, because we're not going to be dealing with tests in this tutorial. And we want to have the application minimal. So set the minimal flag. Like so. This will take some time to create the application and install the packages. I will be right back. And the application has been installed successfully. The packages installed successfully and successfully initialized a Git repository for us. Okay, now we can close this and we can open the Visual Studio Code. So for me, it's just Visual Studio Code. You, you may use some other code editors. Of your choice so open the folder and i created this folder on the desktop so it was called the store just select the folder i trust the authors okay and now we want to open the terminal on the bottom of the vs code we can close to get started so the packages have been already installed as you can see we have the node modules installed and once again if you open up the package json file make sure that you have the correct version of angular installed as you can see for me the angular core version is 14 so make sure to have the exactly the same version now in order to start we can just run ng serve and this will start actually i'm running on the powershell it may come with issues so i need to open up the git bash and now just go ng serve This should start our local server. It says, do I want to share the pseudonymous usage data? No, I don't want to. That has been disabled. We just want to develop the application, nothing else. And once the compilation has been done, we can open up the local host 4200 and see that our app is running. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to go to our source app and access our app component. So inside of our template, let's remove here this boilerplate code, like so. And for the out router output, we can remove that as well. This is the place where we are going to be placing our components. So what I wanted to do, the first thing is I want to add the Angular material. This is the library that we are going to be using for creating all the components. So it's easier to develop and faster. If I go to Angular Material documentation, you can see the list on the sidebar. You can see the list of all the components that I have. 
in order to use the specific components for example like table you need to go to the api of this component and you can import it import this module inside of your app modules and you can see the examples how to use it you just need to go to view code and you can see and you can play around with it it's really easy to implement and i highly advise you to go to the material documentation website first before you start developing and play around with these components because these are the components that we are going to be using throughout uh, the development now let me add the angular material in order to add it let me first clear the console i, I will just run ng add at okay ng add at angular for slash material like so would you like to proceed yes and installing all the packages we can save our app component.ts file it asks us what is the theme default theme that you want to install and i will choose the first one as you can say as you can see here it says indigo pink it's good enough for me so actually you need to be focused on the terminal so select the indigo set up global angular material typography styles yes include and enable animations yes so just click enter you can select the option with uh with the arrow up and the arrow down and just click enter when you want to confirm and with this we have added all the uh, angular material uh, files that we need now in order to use them inside of our application we actually need to open up the app modules file in here we need to install all the modules and import them in order to use them so here inside of the imports array let's just add all the components that we want to use so I will, i'm going to be using the mat side now let's first import all the modules and later on we can just focus on developing and we don't have to play around with the configuration importing the modules and things like that so mat sign up module the next one is going to be mat grid list module this one is obviously for the grid the sign up is for our layout and basically we're going to have the sign up on the left side with the filters and the categories the next one is mat menu module you're going to have a couple of menus obviously then next one is going to be mat button module okay then mat card module most of the elements is going to be placed inside of the card modules card module will give you nice uh, styles around your elements mat card module next one is mat icon module so we will, we will have a couple of icons as well obviously mat icon module mat expansion expansion module this one is going to be for the expansion expansion filters on the left sidebar next one is mat list module also for the left sidebar then mat toolbar module this is going to be used in the header because we're going to have a couple of uh, components that, that are going to be using uh, the toolbar next one is mat table module you're going to have table on the cart uh, page then the next one is mat badge module this one is for adding the badge uh, inside of our cart icon because our cart icon is going to have a badge and displayed how many items is inside of the cart so this module is for that then mat snack uh, snack bar module this one is for displaying the information snack bar for displaying information uh, to the user so maybe you're adding the item to the to the cart or you, you're removing or maybe you're creating new product whatever you're doing you can notify the user for that and this module is for that and uh, this sums up all the modules that you're going to be using now we just need to import these files because we have imported them inside of the imports array but they need to be imported into this file so we can use the import on top and let's do this for all these modules so import 
my outside now module from angular material this one is from uh, side nav you see the auto completion there and we can just copy paste this couple of times it's going to be easier for us to just copy paste like so and obviously we need to update the url map menu map button copies make sure to copy it correctly so we are replacing the side nav module here then mat icon module then mat expansion module then mat list module let me, let me paste a couple more times okay let's remove these dots these commas actually then let me copy paste the other ones mat toolbar mat table module mat badge module and mat snack bar module okay let me remove these commas and now let me update so for the grid list it's going to be from grid list from menu is going to be from menu button is going to be angular material button uh, cart is going to be from cart card actually uh, icon angular material icon expansion model from the expansion sign up uh, actually toolbar is going to be from the toolbar table from the table badge from the badge snack bar from the snack bar and the list module from the angular material list module and now we have done a lot of stuff right nobody likes the the setup and the modules import but this once we once we've done this on the beginning we can focus on coding and we don't have to worry about what we have important and what ha we haven't so but the thing that you, that you need to know is that we're only importing the components that we need in our application and uh, as you can see there are a bunch of components in the uh, angular material but we're only using the ones and importing the ones that we're using in that application the next thing uh, that i want to import and create in our project is Tailwind. Tailwind is a utility CSS uh, library and it helps you uh, to not style but to position uh, your elements easier. So for the components we are using the angular material but for additional styling and for faster development we're going to use the Tailwind. So in order to, to install it you can just go to Tailwind and you can play around. It's very nice utility library and they have really great documentation so whatever uh, the property that you need to use, you can search and find really easily. Okay, <clears throat> so in order to install it, uh, you just follow up the documentation. So as you can see, npm install dash the tailwind CSS, post CSS, and auto prefixer. These are all the packages that you need in order to to run the tailwind. So let's run that inside of the uh, root folder. Run just this npm install. Once that is done, let me clear the console. We can initialize the Tailwind CSS. So we need to create a configuration file. Make sure to copy it. And now let's open up the Tailwind config, config file. It's here in the root folder, tail, Tailwind config.js file. The thing which we want to add, as you can see here, it says configure your template paths. So we want to tell the Tailwind what are, what are the templates that we want to style right to use so here we're basically targeting the source folder and all the folders inside of the source folder these are stars that that are targeting that and we want to target all the files that i have extension html and typescript like so so this is how we are targeting uh, all the templates inside of our application and now we need to import the utility classes and the base classes from the Tailwind. And we do that inside of the style CSS. This is our main style. And you can just go to the documentation and basically imp copy paste the code from, the, from this uh, terminal. And you can import it at the very top here. Okay. And now let's just run our application and see if it runs correctly. If we have done everything 
by the documentation, it's going to run without any issues. The links to all the commands from the get is going to be in the description box below, and also link to the Tailwind and Angular material is going to be in the, do in the box uh, in the description, so you can go and play around and learn a little bit about these uh, libraries if you haven't before, because they are super awesome and they will help you to develop your applications. So now the, comp uh, the project has been compiled successfully and we can reload because we have removed everything from our app component file. You can see that the project is empty. Now, the first thing that we wanna do once the, everything has been set up correctly, we want to create our first component and that is going to be our header component. So what we can do here, we can create a new folder and the name of the folder is going to be components like so and inside of the components folder create new file and let's name it header or actually even better now let me show you what is the the best tool of the angular cli if you want to generate uh, components services pipes directives whatever you need inside of the angular you can use the cli so here we are inside of the root folder and we can just navigate to the source change directory to the source app components folder now let's generate new component you can do that easily by running the command ng generate g for generate c for component and name of the components let's call it header component actually i'm running the powershell and that's not going to work so i need to open up the git bash here sorry git bash like so and now again let's change the change directory to source app components and then ng generate component header like so just wait for a couple of seconds and as you can see it generated the component for us now what we can do here we can use this component copy paste the selector and we can go inside of the app component inside of the template just so let me just inside of the template just paste the tag name css selector and as you can see if i zoom in you can see that it says header works i can close the tailwind and angular material here now let's start actual developing of this application now we can close our app component file and shrink down our terminal okay inside of the header component if you want to use the external html file and not use the one inside of the ts file you can create new a new file so let's just create a new file and name it header let's remove the capital case header.component.html this is the naming convention that you want to follow the first the name of the component dot component and then the extension right so we have usually header.component.ts sometimes we have the css file so whatever you need and now we can remove this code and we need to include it we can remove the styles as well and if you want to include the external html file that we just created just run uh, type in the template url property and for the value of the property just inside of the current directory Target the header dot component dot html like so and let me close all the other files and let me just open up the html file so as you already know this file is on the very top of our application and on this header we want to have the link to the home and we want to have the card so all the time you can see if you have added some components or actually the products to the cart. So on the very top, we are going to use the mat toolbar uh, component. So we are start using the Angular material component. So this component uh, gives you nice, uh, nice component that styles similar to the cart and where you can uh, target and where you can place your uh, tool tools basically. So inside of it, let's create first the link to the home. So like I said, it's going to have the router link to the home, slash home, okay. And we can type in code with Slova store or you can name it my store or however you wanna call it, okay. And on the right side, 
I'll just save that up. And we get this, we get this nice, as you can see, nice gray background here, okay? Okay, a uh, couple of things I wanna add here. So the first thing I want to add the maximum width to our container. So I don't wanna, uh, our website to take the full width of every single device, right? Because you can open it up on very large devices. So set the max width to 7XL and set the MX to auto. This means that the margin left and the right, basically horizontal is going to be auto and it's going to center our container. And let's add some border on the left and the right side for X, like so. Now on the right side, we want to add the icon. So use the mat icon. Like I said, it's going to be card icon. And the name of the icon is shopping uh, underscore cart, like so. And as you can see, we get the icon. Now, in order to style these two, I want to actually apply some of these tail in styles. So I want to separate these two and place them on the edges. Just zoom out a little bit. So in order to do that, I just need to, to run the, the class justify between. Like so, and they're placed uh, you know, on the edges of this container. In order to apply the justify between, you basically need to have the element that has the display flex rule and the mat toolbar already has this rule set up. Now, inside of the mat icon, we want to show uh, the count of the items that are added to the to the icon. How we use that, how we do that is using the mat badge. So add uh, the input property mat badge and let's for now just add something statically. Let's add one. And as you can see, we get this uh, item added. So it's really easy and really fast, as you can see, to, to style uh, and add components using Angular Material. If you want to change the color, you can just use the Mad Badge Color property, badge, or the attribute actually. And I'm gonna use Worn because this is going to add our red color to our badge. That's very nice, cool. And now we want to add the button actually that is going to open the menu once we click on the shopping cart we want to add a menu so this button needs to surround our icon so let me let me move the icon inside of the button and this button is going to be matte icon button so this is the the component for the buttons that hold the icons obviously okay and then we want to add an attribute for the menu Mat menu trigger four, and here you define what are you triggering for. So once you click on the button, you want to trigger the menu, and this is the name of the menu. And below this, <coughs> we can add the mat menu. Okay, let me just get back the header component. Here below that, add mat menu, like so. And for the for the for the selector, we are using the menu here. This needs, this two needs to be the same, right? So this is how you target uh, the menu and add <coughs> the value as math menu. Okay. Now instead of the menu, let's add a div. Div and let's add some classes. Okay. So p three divide y divide solid. Okay, so the first class adds padding on top, bottom, left, right. Divide Y adds a division. So basically like a separator in between the rows inside of the this div. And we want the separation to be solid. So yeah, it's gonna, we're gonna see once we start adding some divs here. Let's add the first row. The first row is gonna have the class uh, also P for padding, uh, padding bottom three, then flex and justify justify between like so so basically we're adding some padding on the bottom we are setting this div uh, as a display flex and we want to justify the items in between so just to uh, set them on the edges right and inside of this div let's set a span for this span we're basically gonna uh, say how many items do we have inside of our cart so let's say three items 
or actually we are using here one so let's add one one and let's add items like so and let's add some margin on the right side so class margin right 16 like so and on the right side we want to have the router link so router link to cart this is going to be the page that we're going to create later the cart and the home page and uh, the text is view cart okay let's save that if we open we get to time two items here the one is the the length but basically the count of the items that we have inside of our cart and the view cart and let's make the items capital i like so then add another div inside of this div we're gonna have all the items and once we start fetching the items we're gonna loop uh, we're gonna loop and display everything that we fetch from the array of the items or the products but for now it's just gonna be static uh, components let's add a, a div with a class flex again justify between and on light margin button 2 so again we are setting the div to the flex we want to separate the items on the edges of the container set the font to be light so to be very light and the margin add some margin on the bottom margin margin bottom 2 so inside of this div uh, let's add item name like keyboard and the quantity is like 1 and then on the right side we want to add the price of it so let's add a class font bold not italic actually this shouldn't be italic as it's span not an i and let's add a price we can put that inside of the angular expression y you will see right now so if we add like 150 dollars although it's very expensive for a keyboard just add a pipe currency like so and now if we save it we'll see that it will add here it adds here uh, basically the, the dollar sign. The default currency is dollar, but <clears throat> with the parameters here, you can add a different uh, currencies. I will leave the uh, dollar one as default. That's not a problem for me. <clears throat> uh, the one thing that I want to add is I want to add some, some padding here. So inside of, uh, inside of this, they actually, we want to have a container here and let's put inside of this container <coughs> all the uh, products that we have so add a p y3 so this means basically add a padding on top and the bottom like so so there's some separation now when we start looping we can just start adding this these items it's like so and it will just add them below as you can see here and on the bottom let's add another div here we're gonna show the total summary so add a text total and add another span here add a class font bold and add like a total again we can use the currency pipe and let's say 450 and let's use the currency pipe like so let's save that and i just want to add some separation so let's add here the class again let's add a flex justify between i add some padding on top and the bottom and let's use font light as well like so okay now we have all these things and on the very bottom so underneath this total div i want to add two icons so the first one is going to be to remove everything from the card so to clear the card and the second one is going to be to go to the checkout right so add a div and let's add a class again padding padding top uh, three again style it as flex and justify between like so and inside of this add two buttons so this these are going to be uh, the buttons that, so these are going to be the buttons that are going to hold the icons so add a class bg rows for the first one 600 this is going to add the red color 
to our to our button text white rounded pool this is going to make a circle out of our button set the width to be 9 and the height to be 9 okay and inside of our button let's add our icon our icon and the first one is going to be remove underscore shopping underscore cart okay and if we save we get this remove cart and, and, and as you can see we added this background rows 600 this is the the different color and if you want to change the color so basically you just choose the the color that you want to add and with the, these numbers you're adding the shade so if i go and type in for example 300 let me show you so it will basically show the the lighter version of of the roads and if you go like 900 it will show you the darker version i like the 600 so i'll leave it as it is here and let's copy paste this one we want to add another icon and this icon is actually going to have it's going to be just a link so router link and let's it's going to link to the cart and the background is going to be green instead of rose everything else remains the same and yeah rounded pool means basically that we are added border radius so if we remove the border around this pool let me show you It shows a square so that's why i'm adding routed pool and this is basically the width and the height of the button with uh, w and h and with that we can complete it, our menu and basically our header so now we can start actually developing our home page our landing page and in order to do that let's open up our source tree and inside of the app let's create a new folder and name it page pages actually inside of the pages we're going to use the angular cli here again cd into let me actually see where we are at in the components cd on the topper directory and let's change directory to the pages okay and here we want to create new component ng generate component and let's call it home component It will take for a couple of seconds and as you can see it creates the component home components inside of the home folder and it updates the app module so if you go to the app module as you can see here we got the home component imported inside of this file and it has been imported into the declarations array so in order to use the component if you haven't been using the standalone component you need to import them inside of the module in order to use it now inside of the app routing module we want to add the first route so the name of this route is going to be home and the component that is going to be loading this is going to be the component that we just created so its name is home component like so and also what we want to do is we want to add a, this path as default so how we do that is we add another object and inside of this object we add a path to empty and we add redirect to home and add path match to full and make that as a string so what this does is basically if you enter the empty string so if you just go to localhost it will redirect to the home and then the component will uh, home component will load this this is how it works so in order to load these routes we actually need to go to the app components folder and here we need to add the router outlet router outlet like so and we need to close that tag Like so and now we have the app component loading our home, home component actually so depending on the on the route it loads the correct component and as you can see if you just type in localhost 4000 actually 4000 let me remove the, the extension 
the protocol actually and we get the home route added to it and we get the homeworks so now we can close the app routing module we can close the app component we can close the header component and we can start developing our home component so let's open up the home component pages home like so and once again let's remove this template as we are going to be creating the new folder new file template url external html file so the name is going to be inside of the current folder home.component.html and we can copy this and just add new file here or you can use this option like so and save this okay now we can shrink down our terminal and let's start developing our html code so here we're gonna use the mat drawer drawer container this is the component from angular material and what it does it basically creates a drawer or a sidebar which can, which uh, it can pop up or stay always the open which is the case in this uh, in this application so add a property auto size to true which means that basically it's gonna true which means that it's gonna recal recalculate uh, what are the values uh, and the widths of the container uh, elements and if there's something loading dynamically it's gonna auto size it again let's add also we want to add a couple of more classes here so uh, let's add a class uh, let's add the min height to be full so to take the full height of the window let's add a max maximum width as we did on the same on the here on the toolbar maximum width to be 7xl and let's add mx auto so basically this means margin on the left and the right side horizontally to be auto so it basically centers your container and let's add border on the left and on the right side like so okay so if we zoom out you can see that we have this container and we have borders on the left on the right side let me zoom in again okay and inside of this mat draw container we'll have uh, one drawer which is basically like like i said a uh, uh, sidebar mat drawer and the mode here is going to be side these modes can change the way how this drawer works yeah you can you can set it to overflow the content but if it's set to side it means that it pushes the main content so it's not overflowing any any layout and we want to set it always to be opened opened like so and let's just add uh, some div here that says filters it's going, to do, it's going to be the categories but it says filters as you can see it's always open here so you cannot close it because we added this property and let's add some padding to this padding six like so that's good okay now on the right side of this mat uh, drawer container we're gonna have mat drawer content so this is going to take the, the biggest portion of our page mat drawer content and i want to add some padding there as well so add padding six like so and here we're gonna create new a new component uh, which is going to be called app products header so inside of our pages folder add new folder and name it components so this folder is going to hold all the components that are inside of the home page right so the components inside of the app folder are components that are, that are being shared across the entire application and inside of the pages we have the home and actually we need to place this component inside of the home page like so move it and now inside of this component let's create a new component now let me see where we are at in our in our tree in the pages now it's cd change directory inside of the components let me just see okay we, we need to change directory to home to components and now let's uh ng 
generate component and let's call it uh, what we said products products header this component is going to have uh, some elements that are going to help our, us to sort and to display products differently okay and inside of let me just open this component and again let's create new file here like so and let's call it product dash header dot component dot html and let's include that okay here instead of inside of the template just add that and let's change the property to the url like so and let's remove the styles here okay now we need to use this selector css selector and inside of the home component inside of the map drawer content we'll just include just include that okay. here like so and we can close the other components and we can just focus on coding this part and on this component on the left side we will have a button that will change the sorting ascending or descending and on the right side we'll have one button which will change the number of products that we display on the page and the third element is just to change the layout of these product items so let's begin we will place that inside of the math card element and let's add some margin on the bottom so margin bottom four add another div and let's add a class of flex and justify between so again on this div we are setting this div to have the display as flex and we're justifying elements between them so it means that the one on the left side we, we're going to have one button and on the other side we'll have two menus but they will be separated totally and they will be on the edges of this container okay now create another div and inside of this div let's create a button for that menu this button we will have mat mat button argument or property which will transform the regular button into the mat button so and it will have text sort by and let's add a dummy description let's say now we want to create a menu for this button so if i save this you can see that we created this button but let's create a menu so once we click on the sort we should get a menu and we can change the the ascending sorting by descending or ascending and we do that by passing the mat menu trigger four this is the property and we need to pass the name of the menu and the name is going to be sort by menu below this button let's create the menu and the menu is going to have mat menu tag and now let's give this name that we are using to target this menu and we need to pass the math menu so by the sort by menu basically we are creating an id we are adding the id to this to this menu and that's how we target it and connect this math menu with this button okay and now if we save that we should get an empty menu like so and in this menu which we should create two buttons which will change the sorting the first one is going to be descending and the second one is going to be ascending and also let's add mat menu item property to both of these like so and now what we can do is we can create a sort variable which we can update so let me just check the html if it renders correctly it does as you can see and what we can do here is we can just create a variable and name it as sort and give it a default value to sort and we can change this desk to the variable like so and then we can create a new method 
which will update this. Okay. It properly desk does not exist on the prop product, so because it's sort not desk. This is the name of the property. Sort by and sort needs to have the descending the default value, not sort. Okay. And we can create a create new function or actually method on sort updated. This method is going to return the void. So it's not going to return anything. It's just going to update this variable here. So it needs to accept new sort parameter, which is type of string. And all it does is it updates the sort on this one, on this class, to new, new sort equals new sort, like so. Later on, we will emit this value and we will fetch the results. But for now, this, this is just uh, the regular functionality. Okay, and now we need to call that method on click. So here on click, call the uh, on sort updated method. And for the first one, send the description. Sorry, not description, descending. It's a little bit confusing. And for the second one, send the ascending, like so. And if I save this, when we select, it should change the value. And later, like I said, we will go and basically uh, emit the new value and we will fetch the data according to this value. So we will just sort it differently, okay. And with that, we have completed the, the, the left sorting menu. Let's proceed with the second part. Okay, so on, on the right side, let's create another div. And let's set a class. Flex again, and items center. This means that we want to align the items horizontally, not actually vertically. So they need to be in, in line with this sort by description. Everything needs to be in line. Okay. So let's add another div. And here we again uh, want to create another menu. So let's add a button again. And this button is also going to be a mat button. And again, let's add mat menu trigger. Mat menu trigger for property. Or, and it will receive the menu. It will actually be targeted uh, and connected with the menu. This is the ID that I was using. So math menu, and let's add the ID of menu, and it's math menu. I mean, this could be more descriptive, but on this uh, component, we only have these two menus, so it should be, it should be good enough. Okay. And then uh, here, I want to add a text name show and here we will basically uh, show the number of items so let's add a new variable and uh, let's call it call it items show count okay and let's create that new variable here items show count and let's set the default value to 12 I think yeah let's use 12 okay and if I save it here show 12 so basically show 12 items that that's what it means okay and what i want to add besides that is i want to add an icon and the name of the icon is expand more so that indicates that actually we want to we can open this one right <clears throat> and that's exactly something that we missed for the first menu so something that should indicate is sorting as well that that we want to have the expand here yeah that's more like it okay let me close it and now inside of this menu we'll we will show different values similar like we did for the for the first menu and actually i can just copy paste this code so it's easier so from the first menu let's just copy the buttons because here we will also have the buttons. And just for the first item, let's set the value to 12. 
and let's create a new method on this one was called on sort updated and the new one is going to be called on items updated okay this one also doesn't return anything just updates the, val the value here so it will receive the count which is a number and it will update this dot items show count to equals to count okay and we can use this method now to update this to this value so instead of on sort we will call on items updated and here we will pass value of 12 okay here but let's add a couple of more, more items so the second one is going to be 24 24 and the last one is going to be 36 so if you have any other preferences on how many items would you like to show on the page you can add them here let's save that up and if we try we can see that this updates the values like expected so right now this is static it doesn't change any data because we don't have any data yet but later it will update the number of items that we have on the page okay and the next thing which we want to add we want to add additional div and additional buttons where we can change the layout okay so we can close this div and let's add another button and this button is going to hold the mat icon and this icon is going to be called a view list like so here and let's copy paste this two times the second one is going to be view module and the last one is going to be called view Confi. and we get these three icons and right now they are static right but later on they will uh, you know update our layout so but we can create the method that that we will use to to update our layout so let's create that on columns columns updated it receives the columns number which is a number and this doesn't return anything so return type is void here uh, then we want to emit this value so we actually need to first create event emitter so let's add output and make sure to import the output from the angular core this is the way how you send the data outside of your component to parent components so create uh, output and let's name it column columns count change like so and this will be new event emitter from Ang and make sure to import it as well from angular core okay and it will send a number so this is the number of columns you want to display in a row okay and what we can do here is basically just call this dot columns count change and just emit the number that we receive from the template like so and now let's call this method inside of our HTML file here on click so here where we have view list on the first one we want to show only one item per row okay On the second one I want to show three items per row and on the last one I want to show four items per row oops here make sure to put them inside of the parentheses and now we can catch that value inside of our parent component which is the header component so here inside of the app products header we have new events and that event is called 
uh, let me just check what is the exact name. Columns count change. Okay. And this is the event. Columns count change. And when we call that event, we can call new method on columns columns count change but we need to create this this method inside of our home component here and we will we will need to create a new variable which we will update and use inside of the inside of our layout we can set we can actually remove the styles we don't need the styles here and let's create a Let's create a new variable. So the new variable is going to hold the number of items that we have per row. So the columns that we have per row is three. That is the default, right? That's right. And what we want to do is basically to update this. So this dot count, this dot calls actually calls is equal to, and we need to receive the calls number, calls number which is a number and this method doesn't return anything. So again, it's void. And this calls basically receives this, this new number, right? And yeah, I think that should, that, that should do it. So let's just try if this works. We can go and open up the home component and inside of the drawer content, we can just place the variable here. And as you can see, the default value is three. Let's see if we click on this one, it should show one. And if we click on this one, it should show three, actually four. Yeah. And on the middle one, it should show three like so. This works as expected. So we can continue now and build our, actually we can first build our categories or the filters on the left side. Okay. So let's create another component and let me open up the terminal again here. So inside of the components folder, app pages home components folder let's create new one ng generate component and let's call it filters like so it will take a couple of seconds okay so it created a new component and it updated source app app module so once again let me show you it adds the new component inside of the app module so i don't have to do this manually so this is the beauty of the angular cli and inside of the components open up the filters so this is the new component that we just created and again let's remove the styles and let's add external template url template url and we will create here new html file let's call it filters.component.html so let me copy this name and here in filters create new file with the same uh with the same name that we just uh placed inside of the component decorator okay uh, let's first create categories categories array so this component will hold the list of the categories that we can use to filter our our products on our website so let's create some dummy categories later on we will touch this from the api so let's say shoes maybe sports i don't know something that will, you just need something to use into iterate through inside of our HTML file. Okay, let me close the other files so we are not confused. And then we will use another material component and it will be called math expansion panel. You remember this one. So this component basically, uh, it's like a expansion panel is set so you will just see the name of the title of this panel and once you click on it it will expand and show you all the items inside of it so this uh, let's show this panel only if we have the categories so ng if categories like so so if, if the categories do exist and they are not undefined show this otherwise just hide this panel inside of the math expansion panel let's add Matt expansion, pa expansion panel header. Let's remove this closing tag and let's add a new one. And instead of the header, we just want to add a title, which is Matt panel 
title and it will be called categories like so okay so let me remove caps lock and we'll have another uh, mat selection list okay this is another mat tag selection a list and it basically shows the the elements in the list so and if you it allows you to select one of the elements from the list and we want to be able only to select one item so that's why we need to pass the multiple multiple uh, input false attribute so if we click on true here for the multiple you can select select multiple items inside of this math selection list okay and here we have math uh, list options like so and we want to loop through the categories array that we just created so create ng4 and call that category of categories okay and set the value value to be a category like so and inside of the this option we want to display a button and just place the category here like so if we save it actually there's no problem with this because we haven't included this component inside of our uh, inside of our uh, sidebar so that's the problem now take the selector and go inside of the home component HTML file and instead of these filters you need to place this component okay now we will see it okay there you go and if you click on the categories it expands and you get the shoes and the sports okay now we want to emit this value so once you click on like on the shoes on the sports as you can see you only select one of the items and we will have more items here more categories but once you select on the item we want to emit this value to the parent component and we can use the data to fetch the categories right so let's do that inside of the uh, template here we can create new method and let's call it on show category on show category this one will return nothing so the term void and it will receive the category which is just a string and this string needs to emit this value so let's create new one and let me import the output from angular core like so and let's name it show category okay which is new event emitter event emitter okay and this one will receive the string actually with emit the string let me close the folder so you can see it it will emit the string and let's import event emitter from angular core as well and now when we call this method and when we pass the category we can emit this value so let's call this dot show category dot emit and pass category okay and let's call this method inside of our html component here inside of our button let's call click on click event call our method and pass a category okay and now we can test this again uh, the event name is the show category so here inside of our home component we can call this method show category and we can create new method that method can be called on show category and just pass the value i usually pass the value from the from the uh, child events as event this is the param parameter okay and inside of the ts class let's add this method this method again is not returning anything so it returns void and it, it and it needs to have one parameter which is uh, the category and let's call it new category 
cat category like so and it will be the string value and now uh, we need to add the new property so let's call it category and let it be value string and undefined so it can be when you don't define it initially it needs to take uh, either of these two values so if you initialize it right away it can be just string but if you leave it uh, undefined you need to add uh, these values were undefined okay so here we call this dot category and we assign it new category value and we can just use this value to test it inside of our home component the same way how we are testing the columns let's test category and once we click on one of these elements we should see these values inside of our component choose sports it works as expected now the next thing which i want to create on the home page it's i want to display the product uh, boxes here and it should and that should do it after that we should fetch the actual data and display it so let's just to sum up what we created here we created this cart uh, menu and actually i see that we are using the two same icons so that needs to be fixed uh, this one is for removal of the cards and this one is actually for proceeding to the checkout so open the products header and inside of the products header no actually it's not in, inside of the products header it's actually in the header component so inside of the components folder source app headers we have here components we have here the icons and the one is remove shopping cart and the other one is also remove shopping cart so it needs to be just shopping cart let's test it yeah so this one should uh route us to the cart as you can see here and not to to remove the shopping cart yeah okay so we fixed that bug so just to sum up we created this header with this uh home route link we created this cart which shows the items where you can go on and use the cart you can remove everything from the cart and you can proceed to the checkout and actually this is all static it just needs to be implemented we added this sort menu we added this show a uh, number of items menu we added this layout buttons and we added the categories on the left side now like i said just add the products on the middle and let's proceed to the next page and now in the home component html file let's remove this category variable and we'll add a wrapper to our product box component so i'm gonna use math grid list component and this component basically is a grid so just pass a tile child component and it separates them into columns and rows that's all it does so we want to set the gutter size which is actually the margin in between these elements so gutter size to 16 so it's 16 pixels for number of columns we want to change this dynamically depending on the buttons that we click here on the first one we want to have the column number one per row in the in the middle three per row and the right one four per row but as we created this uh, this variable dynamically already so we'll just pass the columns this variable and for the row height we also want to have this dynamically updated so let's create a new variable named row height and let me go to the home ts file and here we have columns that are being three at the moment but we are updating the columns here so for the row height let's just uh, create a new object that we can use to map the heights so create a constant named rows underscore height and this will be an object and this object will have three values so the first value is obviously when you have one co one column selected or one item per row and it will have height of 400 right then the second value is when we have three items per row and this one will have height of 335 and the last one is when we have four items per row it will have height of 350 and let's assign uh, the type so the type is an object basically and the object has an ID number this is a key and it has value as number okay 
just set up the view wrap word wrap so that you can see okay now what we want to do is we want to set the row height depending on these columns here so we can use this constant and just call this dot calls and as default one is three so we will have three columns as default the default height is going to be 335 but once we update the on column count change we want to update this value as well so we will basically call this assignment again and make sure to use the this to refer to this variable here so this way we are getting updated the row height dynamically as well here okay and inside of our math grid list we want to add uh, another math component which is a child of math grid list and that is math grid tile okay and we will use this one to loop through the products array once we fetch them and now we want to create new components so let me open up the terminal here and change directory inside of the source app pages home pages and components and inside of this uh, folder let's create ng generate component and the name of the component let it be product box so this one will hold all the informations for the products an image uh, title description all these things that we want to display about, about the products so as you can see uh, it created a new product box component and it, uh, and it updated app.module.ts file okay let me close that down and we can go into components folder and open up the products product box folder here what i want to do same as with the other components let me just remove this boilerplate and we want to create new components so html file so product uh, dash box that component dot html okay and let's include this external html file so template url is name of the property and make sure to refer to the current directory like so okay and we can close that now we can include this component so make sure to use the selector and include the selector inside of the home component in the mad grid tile okay here we can close the home component and we can open up the product html file and let's close the other so that i that i they are not confusing us okay so here again we're gonna have let me just uh, enlarge the browser and we will have math card as the wrapper again obviously let's add some class so we want to add text center to the math card because i want everything to be centered the title the description and all this information okay so let's add another div and inside of this div let's add an image okay this image is going to have a class mb-1 which means margin bottom one and mx auto which basically adds an auto margin on the left and the right side and centers the image okay for the source okay and for the source we can use placeholder images there's a great website for it and just type in the source like so https colon four slash four slash via dot placeholder dot com four slash and this is the actual size of the image that you want to put in i just put it like 150 but you can put whatever size do you want you know so and you basically get like a square and you get the values of the image inside of it it's very useful if you want to just have the placeholders while you're developing something okay and let's add uh, height to be 200 pixels okay and this is how to add a custom height to your properties h stands for height and this way inside of the brackets you can add a custom value this is predefined value and this is the custom value 
custom value. Okay, let's save that, and this changes uh, the image size. Okay. Now next to the image, let's add another div, and inside of this div, we're gonna add uh, information about the product itself. So let's add a class and set the width to full. So this basically sets the width to 200%. Okay. And inside of this uh, div, let's add another div. In here, let's add category of this product. So let's name it shoes, maybe. Okay. Then let's add a paragraph below that. Okay. And let's add a class truncate. Okay, and hover white space dash normal. Okay, what this does is basically if you have a text that is longer than this box, it cuts off the text and adds three dots. And when you hover over that text, it shows you entire text just in hover. It's very useful uh, when you have long titles, you know. So let's add a title here, like sneakers, maybe. Okay, let me just change the view to be wrap, like so. And that looks nice. And now let's add another div here, actually, the description. So let's add a paragraph. Here and for the description, let's uh, just add dummy text description and we will update that later on. Okay. Uh, actually, I see that text is not centered and that's why that the reason for that is because we miss here the, the text, the T on the end. Okay, that's more like it. And now below this div, okay, we want to add another div and let's add a class flex and justify so here at the bottom i want to display the price and i want to display here uh, proceed to the checkout basically uh, uh, or actually to add to the cart so cart icon so that we can add this item to the cart yeah. so add a span here and let's add, we use the class text red 400 and let's use the Currency pipe again to display the value of the of the price. Let's use 150 and just use the pipe currency like so, and it displays the currency in correct format. And on the right side, I want to add a button, and inside of this button, let's add a match icon. Add icon, okay, like so, and let's add icon as shopping underscore card, okay, and let's just change the color of this uh, of this icon class and set it to text dash gray dash five hundred. Okay, that's much more uh, subtle. Okay, I think this looks very nice. So uh, the one thing that I want to change here is basically depending on the, what is the layout selected, we want to change uh, this layout on our product box a little bit. So when we are in full screen mode, basically when we only have one column, like in this case, one column per row, we want to show the image on the left side and we want to change the description, uh, the title, you know, all this information on the right side here. So that it takes more 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 space actually right and the image is bigger so how we can do that is we can create an input here which we will receive from the parent component and let's call that here so import input from angular core make sure to import it on top here initialize it and add a name full width mode and let's add a default value false false because when we load our application, we will have three product, product boxes per row. So it's not going to be in the full width mode, but only if somebody clicks on this first icon, it's going to be one product box per row, and then we are in full width mode, okay? 
And now we can use uh, this property to alter the sum of the stars that we have. Okay. And actually, before we do that, let's go to the home component. And we can set this property on the product box. So it's in full width mode only if columns is equal to one. Okay. Okay. We close that. So if you go now and click like so, you can see that actually this column is taking the entire place, right? Uh, but it's not taking the full width. So let me go back to the home component and set here the width, set the class width full. So it needs to take the full width of this entire container, like so. But the layout is different, so we want to change that. Okay. Okay, so here, the first thing that I want to do is I want to center the text only if we are not in the full uh, full width mode. So here we can use ng class to create this conditional, right? And here I will add an object basically. An object and inside of the object add text center class only only if you are not in full width mode like so and I will copy this. So because we are going to use this quite some time. And also I want to change the height of this image. So where is our image? It's here. So let's add again ng class. And let's add basically add, a, add an object and let's add a height of 200, 200 pixels only if we are not in full height. So basically if we are in default mode. Otherwise, increase the height to use the 360, uh, 360 pixels. Actually, okay, like so. And make sure to wrap that in the quotes here as well, because this is the index of the object. And 360 if it's in full width mode. And I want to, yeah, put the quotes like so. So let's try this. Okay, now switch to the full width mode and you can see that the text is centered actually on the left side. Actually, it's not centered, it's uh, aligned on the left side and the image size is bigger. And if we switch back uh, to the default layout, it's going back, okay. Uh, the, the different layout we want to achieve and still, but we want to move the image on the left side and this description on the right side. So how we can do that is we want to add for this div, we want to add property flex. So let's add again, ng class and let's add flex if it's in full width mode. Okay. Like so, and you can see now, it's in full width mode basically. On the left side, we have this and description on the right side. But we still need some, some more styling because it doesn't look that great either. So we can go and add some padding and the other properties. So here, let's add ng class. Okay, and let's add some padding left and on the right side. And let's add a flex and flex direction to column and justify between. Okay. Okay, like so. Let me just make sure to to apply this rule if you are in full width mode and make sure to surround these classes with the quotes and that your spelling is correctly. So what we're doing here is we're setting this div to the flex mode or basically display flex and the flex direction is to columns. It's not, it's not for rows and we are just basically justifying in between. If I save it and test it, Okay, that looks much better. It has some space around it, much, much better. 
And I think basically we are done, except the fact that I want to display uh, this description only if we are in full width mode. So go ng if this is going to be easy, only if in, in full width mode. So when we are on default, we don't show the description. And when we switch on the, on the full width mode, we, we show the description. Yeah. Okay. And that's all I wanted to do. Now let's test the layout and how it looks. If we go to the home page and let's copy paste it, this mad grid tile a couple of times. I'm going to just copy it. Like so. Okay. Let me just copy it. I lose focus for like five or six times, like so. And let's see what we get. Okay. So as you can see, this is the default layout where we have three items per row. And if you click on the first one, on this layout, we get one item per row. And we can click on the third one, get the four items per row. And this looks, uh, and, and looks and works as expected. With this, we basically have completed the home page. So we created everything uh, which, which is static here. But the, the only thing that I want to do here now is I want to implement the API. Apart from this page, we'll have a card page. And actually, we can first go and create a card page because maybe we should start first with implementing all the static files first. And then we can dig in into developing uh, and integrating the API into it. So let's do that first. Let's create another page. Okay, so let me close all these files and let me open the terminal. Let me see where we are at in the directory and let's change directory to the pages. So CD a couple of times and now we're in the pages directory. Here we want to create new card components or actually new page component. So run the command ng generate component and call it card. Okay. It will take a couple of seconds to generate it like so. And once again, we can close everything and we have this card component. So what we want to do here is we want to set the routes. We want to set new route in order to load this page. So let's just copy paste this first route and change the path to be card. The component that is going to load this is going to be card component. Make sure that the card component is imported at the very top here. Okay, close that. We can close the terminal as well. And now let's open up the card component and let's test it out this route. So if we click on and now navigate to, to the card, we get this card works, which is actual HTML text here, right? So once again, remove the styles and let's give an external HTML file. Okay. So template URL and make sure to navigate to the current directory and we'll call it cart.component.html. Okay. <clears throat> and let's create that file like so. Okay, well, on this component, we're gonna create uh, basically a material table and we're gonna display all the information before the user goes and buys the product. So we need to create at the moment, we don't have the real data and we don't have the functionality uh, working for the cart itself. So we need to create a dummy uh, cart object and let's do that. So we will have a cart, which, going, which is going to be the cart, the cart of type. And we don't have this type yet, uh, but it will receive the items array. So let's create new folder inside of the application and let's call it models. Make sure that is inside of the app component, not inside of the pages. And here we can create new file for the card. So basically in this folder, we will create definition for our interfaces and create new file and name it cart.model.ts. Okay. And the first thing that I want to create is export interface. Let me just shrink this down. Inter interface cart item. 
Okay. And this card item is going to have a couple of properties. So product is going to be type string. Name is going to be type string as well. Price is going to be type of number. Quantity is going to be type of number. And the ID of the card item is going to be number as well. So here we are making the definition of our data that we are going to receive and pass through the application. And we are going to export interface card. This is the one that we just used in our card component. And this one is going to have the items array. So it, it's basically an array of card item that we just created here. Okay. And with this, we have created definition uh, for our card. Okay, so we can import that here. Add import from source app models card.model. Okay, like so. We can save it. And now let's actually create uh, some dummy object. You can just copy. You can copy the object definition from here. So it's easier. For the product, uh, let's just say shoes or actually uh, the product is going to take uh, the image of the product so let's just copy the placeholder that we used before here okay the name is going to be sneakers price 150 I'm making this up so quantity one okay make sure that you format the subject correctly and for the ID let's set the ID to one as well okay like so so we have now default object okay and what we want to do next is we want to add a property that we will use inside of our our uh, table so that property is called data source and this property is gonna receive the cart item array you know like so and make sure to define it as array Okay, and let's assign it to empty array at, at the beginning, right? And we can assign in, inside of the ng on it, this the data source is equal to this dot cart dot items. Okay, but once we uh, hook up the API, we will fetch the data and then we will feed uh, this data source from there. Okay. The last thing that I want to add here is I want to add the columns. So displayed columns, col displayed columns. Okay. And this is going to be type string array. Well, like so, and let's just create these, this array. Okay. So these are the columns that we are going to show in the table. So we will show the product name second one i mean i could copy paste but yeah this will work as well price uh the next one is quantity okay the quantity the next one is going to be total this is the total amount that the user needs to pay and the action uh column in this column we're going to display a couple of buttons so if if user wants to remove the product from the table from the cart actually Okay, let's save this and let's open up the cart. So now we can start creating our table. Again, you already know we, we're gonna use math card for a wrapper and uh, we will only display this ng if the cart.items.land is existent. So basically only if we have, uh, you know, the length of the, of the cart items Otherwise, we, we want to show, show a message to the user. So let's copy paste this. That user needs to buy something in order to get uh, display to this product, right? So <clears throat> what we can create here is you can add a paragraph that says your cart is empty. And let's add a button where we can navigate back to the home, start shopping. And let's add a mat raised button. So basically, uh, we are assigning raised button. So uh, class to it, 
and rattle, add rattle link so that they can navigate to the home where they can see uh, the products. So let's change the layout to word wrap so you can see everything. If I save this, for now, as you can see, the card items land is empty and it basically, no, actually, uh, it's, it shows both of these uh, cards because we use where the card item land exists. We want to show this only if there is no card item land. And how we can test it is basically we can just remove this this first item that we have in inside of the this array, and we should get yeah we should get this and we get the redirected here. How we can get back is we should click on view card because we assigned the card uh, route here. Okay, let's give back this product to the items array, and we should see our card, which is empty because we haven't created anything yet there. So let's start creating our table, okay? So let me shrink this. And here on top, let's create table. And let's add a property math table like so. And data source, here we will pass the data source that we created like so. And let's add some classes. So let's add a class math Elevation, elevation, elevation. Z eight. This is going to add. Uh, you, you need to make sure that you spell correctly. Otherwise, it's not going to be applied. Elevation. Uh, this is going to add some shadow on below the table. Yeah, and set the width to full. Also, I want to add a container to our math card, so I can add. Class actually the maximum width of our container. So add a maximum width to 7XL. This is the same as we did on the home page. And let's center it so use the MX Auto. And this is something which we can use for the bottom mat card as well here. So if we go and check out here, if you enlarge, actually you cannot see it because it's big, but here you can see it when it's on 100%. Basically, it's not taking the full width of the window it has the maximum width okay like so okay and now inside inside of the uh, table let's add the first column or actually we can first add the rows so we'll have actually th three types of rows first one is the header the second one is the regular row and then and the last one is the footer so table row here and the first one is going to be for math header row like I said this is for the for the table headers and it also needs to have math header row definition so math header row definition and this one is going to be the display columns that we created here okay I have a typo columns like so columns here and make sure to add the to math header row definition here. Okay, let's create another one. So the, the next one is going to be for the regular table row. So math row, and again we we need to have math row definition definition, and here we're gonna loop through the items. So what we are going to do is we define let row and basically columns are going to get information from display columns here. Okay. And the last one is table footer. So again, mat footer row. And we also want to give it a definition, mat footer row definition is equal to displayed columns. So these are the placeholders in which we are going to render our uh, table data, right? So table cells actually. So this is what you wanna create first. And now you can go and create these columns. So let's create ng container, like so. And the first one is going to be product, so mat, column, defin 
if it stands for definition, it's going to be product. This is the, the key that you're accessing the data source. So it needs to match the these columns basically from the items itself. So if you want to display a particular uh, property from the object, you would use this math column definition here. Now you can access that. So let's add a table uh, header for this one and let's add a definition to it. So mat header cell. This is important in order to uh, add all the functionalities that Matt's table has. So you, when you add this, this property to it, it can uh, add additional like sorting or filtering, all these things that uh, material table has. So that's why you, you're adding it. And you want to pass Matt's header cell definition. Okay, and for the title, we're gonna uh, say this is going to be product. And now let's create a uh, table, uh, the actual table cell. And for the table cell, we need to pass the math cell. And again, math cell definition, definition. And we will, go, we will define uh, what is the name of the element. And we'll just call it element. And this is how we access the property from the object with, with this uh, variable that you define in the math cell definition. Okay. So we can we can open the image image attribute image of uh, element sorry and the source is going to be element dot product so this is the product property here so we will access this one this URL element dot product okay and make sure to surround that with uh, curly braces so that you are inside of the Angular expression. Let's add an alt as product and let's add uh, some classes. Class, make it width to be 100 pixels. Okay, let's close that bracket and let's add some margin on the top and the bottom to five pixels, okay. And let's create a footer, footer cell. So TD, let's add again, uh, Matt footer cell. Okay, let's add a definition for this footer. Matt footer cell definition. And you can leave this empty. You don't have to assign anything to it. So in the footer, we want to display a button here, which will say continue shopping basically. Matt is going to be the same button. We can just copy paste it from this one. But we will update the text to continue shopping instead of start shopping. Okay. Continue shopping like so. Let's save this and see what we get. Okay. Uh, we don't get anything displayed in our table. Let me just check the console. Okay. I have some error. So let's debug it together. And the reason why we are getting this error is because as you can see here, we defined displayed columns and we are defining name. So it reports the name error because the product has been found here. The, we have the math column definition product, right? But we are missing the name. So if we go and remove these products here, these columns, and just comment them out, we should get the first column, right? To, to make the table work. As we, ex as we expected. But as you can see, the first column has uh, the table header here, product. It has the table cell with the image here. And at the bottom, in the footer, it has a button that says continue shopping, like so. So let's uncomment these others and let's add them. Okay. Now let's just copy paste this container and for the second one the de a definition of the column is name the title of this one is going to be name obviously instead of the image we want to just display the element dot name okay and what we can do here we can just copy paste this one a couple of more times actually uh, yeah, 
uh, for the bottom I don't want to display the continue button again so let me remove this button so for the footer cell this is going to be an empty right and uh, for the for this one as well I want to apply some style because some names of, of uh, particular products could be very large very long actually so let's apply uh, one class so that we can actually truncate the width of the of the title so let's add the truncate and the maximum width is excess so we are setting here the maximum width of this element and if it's longer that, than this uh, maximum width it will just cut it off and show the dots that's what I wanted to, to display now I can copy this and paste it so the next one that we need uh, is price okay so the title the column definition is price the title is price as well and here instead of the paragraph I mean we can use the paragraph but let's just add the property price and let's use the currency type as well or we can even remove the paragraph because we don't we don't need to apply any any style whatsoever okay and let's copy it again the next one is quantity let me copy that so the mat column definition is quantity the title is also quantity with upper first case and the property is quantity but we want to remove this currency pipe here okay let me copy this one and paste it the next one is total okay so the math com definition is total the title is total as well and here as well for the total we just want to add element dot total like so and on the footer we actually want to display because we will have on each row the total amount of the prices and on the very bottom we want to display the the total grand total amount so let's just add uh, here let's just add new span here let's add some class font dash bold so make it bold add some padding five and let's uh, let's set the display to block in order to apply this padding and uh, so we need to set this block and we'll uh, create new method get total and we'll pass the cart dot items and again we will use the currency pipe make sure to wrap that inside of the uh, angular bracket so it's in, inside of the expression okay and let's define this get total method inside of our car, car component so here so this method is going to return a number and it receives an items which are type of cart item array okay and what we want to do Is we want to go and map items dot map and here we can access the item and what we want to do is we want to take the item price and multiply that with item dot quantity so here what we are doing basically is we are going uh, looping through the items and we're taking the item price and the quantity that it has and then we want to add all of that so we can use the reduce and inside of the reduce we always have the previous value and the current value so and all we are doing here is basically taking the previous value and adding the current value on and we need to set the initial value here which will be the zero okay and it shows the error here because we are not returning the number it, so we will need to add return in order to satisfies satisfy this rule okay like so 
and now we created this method let me just indent it a little bit so it's not in the same line okay and it, so using this method we are getting the total price total price for entire uh cart basically not not just per product and row but for the entire uh, entire uh, cart yes okay let me see that was the, uh, the total and the last one is the action okay so let's actually copy paste the previous column and let's copy paste the definition so it's action and for the title we don't want to uh, say we don't want to add uh, the title actually but we want to add a button here so let's add a button and we will use this button to clear uh, to clear entire card clear all so to style it let's add a uh, mat raised button so this transforms it, the regular button into mat uh, mat button and let's add a color worn so that it's actually red color worn and let's add a class float right okay so let's save that let's save this one and we get our table as you can see here uh, what I wanted to add apart from the buttons on top I want to add buttons per row as well here so let me just find that so here instead of the element the total okay I can remove that and here on the bottom I can remove the total as well here and here we want to add uh, an icon so basically inside of the button and let's add a class of mat mini fab okay this will give us like a small button with the rounded uh, style styling okay mat, mat, uh, and let's add a color worn so it's red and let's add a class float right like so and the name of the icon is close okay so we get actually yeah it's the name of the icon but we need to import the mat icon element and just name it as close and we get this button nice and styled okay and if we go and just let let me try and copy paste this product once again like so and change the like the id to two for example we will get two items per row and we can remove you know each and one of them okay one thing i'm noticing here actually is that we, we are missing the total values here so this need to be total values per row so if you have quantity like two or three or five and this is the total value that you're getting so if we go go to the to the total uh, column actually can see that we are using element total and that's something that we don't have <clears throat> so what we want to do here is element dot quantity like here times element dot price and let's format that in the currency pipe as well okay and let's wrap it to the parentheses like so and now let's test it and as you can see we get the values and what if we go and change the quantity let's say for the second product we have three items this one and we get 450 the first one is 150 quantity is three and now the total price is getting updated but ideally uh, to increase the quantity we want to do that here so let's add a couple of buttons so that user is able to update the quantity if he wants so let's wrap the spam with the quantity and let's add a couple of buttons here so let's add a button for removal of the for reducing the quantity 
and let's style it with mat icon button like so and let's add mat icon inside of it and the name will be remove okay like so so the user can remove and let's add another one afterwards and uh, let's call this one add and actually this is the actual name of it it's not that we are calling it like that so is the actual name of the button okay and you can see that this sneakers is not actually aligned with all of this element and the reason for that is that we are using the paragraph so and it adds some margin on the bottom what we can do is we can change this into span here span and it gets aligned and make sure to and, and actually we can we can test this so let's see if it works or not so let's add some gibberish long text and see if it gets cut off as you can see it doesn't work the reason for that is we need to set the property block to it and now it works because the span uh, by default is not a block element so okay it doesn't work okay let's just remove this gibberish text and let's add the element name and don't forget to add the block display block property okay the last thing that I forgot to add here, I think it, this looks nice. The only thing that is missing is we want the actual button to go and to, you know, do the, the actual shopping, right? So to proceed to the checkout. So let's find the actions here, actions con uh, column. And for the footer, let's add that button for that. So let's add a, add a button. And this button will say proceed to the checkout. Okay, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be math raised button, and it's gonna say proceed to checkout. You can make this one uh, color set the color to be primary so it stands out. And let's float it to right. So let's add a class float right. Okay. Let's go back to cart. And here we have the procedure checkout. Okay, instead of implementing the API first, I think that it makes much more sense to first implement the logic of the cart. And when I say the cart, I mean uh let me just enlarge this. And when, I, and when I say cart, I mean by adding and removing the items from the cart, right? And reading them on different places. For example, if you want to read the items uh, from the cart here on the menu, and we want to read them here as well on this cart page. So let's implement that. Okay. Uh, let me actually minimize this entirely and we can focus more on coding here. So what I want to open here is I want to open the home page and on the home page you have product box here and I want to add a new event basically. So on this button which is basically this shopping cart here I want to add this product information to the new service that we will create just in a bit. Okay so let's add a click on click event let's call uh, on add to cart okay and let, now let's create this method so let me close all the other files let's open the TypeScript file here and let's add this method so this method is not going to be returning anything so the return type is void and we are also not passing anything. So what this method does, it's going to emit the product that we are going to get from the input. But for now, as we are not getting, uh, as we don't have anything, we are not fetching the actual data, let's create this product as a, as a dummy data. And the type of this product is going to be product, but as we don't have this product uh, interface created yet, let's do that. So inside of the models, create new file, and name it product.model 
ts like so okay and now let's create new interface export interface product and this interface is going to have uh, id which type of number title which is type of string price which is type of number uh, category which is type of string description which is type of string as well and the image which is type of string so these are all the properties of the product that we're going to use and we're exporting this make sure so that you are able to import it into files that you need so here we can just go and import it on top so import product make sure that it's imported and now let's uh, it can be actually product or undefined because once when we implement the api we will pass this uh, through the input same thing as we are doing here here with the full width mode and while it's fetching the data this product can be undefined for a little bit of time right but now let's uh, create an array which is a dummy data and we can just copy uh, from this product the object definition so it's easier to create this object number let's add one title uh, what we can create we can create sneakers sneakers price 150 by the way i'm not sure if the spelling of sneakers is correct so sorry about that if it's not category shoes description i'll just put the description word and for the image again we can use the one that we are using here placeholder okay so instead of this string let's put this placeholder and like so okay now what, what we can do is we can go and use this product to emit but in order to emit this product we need to create event emitter so let's add an output again this is the way how you communicate uh, with the child and the parent component okay output and we will give an event name to add add to cart which is a new event emitter okay and make sure that you import both of the, the output and event emitter on top here from angular core and what we can do we can call this dot add to cart and emit our product this dot product so it basically means that somebody clicked uh, on this shopping cart and he wants to add this this product to the shopping cart yes so now we need to catch this this uh, method in inside of our home component so let's go to the let's close these components and inside of the home component let's scroll to the product box actually we can remove these ones and we will create dynamic ones later on so from the app product box okay we have new event and let me set the view to word wrap as well here so that you can see all the classes okay and the attributes okay so we will get an event which is called add to cart and we want to create new method here on add to cart and for all the events that i'm passing from the child i'm using the same attribute name which is called the event that's just naming convention that i like to follow but you don't have to obviously now let's create this method now it will throw an error because we don't have this uh, method created yet so on the add to cart and uh, this method is going to return nothing so the return type is void and we want to create a uh, new basically service that we are going to be using where we can store uh, the the actual data so let's do that inside of the app folder let's create new folder and call it services okay and actually let me just comment out this add to cart because it's throwing us an error and it looks like we are doing something wrong i don't like to see errors 
Okay, let me open up the terminal. And let me see where we are at. So we are at the pages, so CD on the upper direct directory and change into services. Okay. And here we want to, let me just clear the console. And here we want to generate ng, g for generate, service, uh, so s is for service. And the name of the service is going to be cart service. Okay. Let's take just a couple of seconds to create this service. Okay, so it created this cart service, but you can see it hasn't updated the app module. So we will need manually to import this service. So if we go to the services, we have the cart service. And what we want to do is we want to go to app.module and we want to inject our service in the providers array here and make sure to import from the cart service here so, so that we can use it and it's imported here on the top. Okay, I can close the terminal and save this up, close the module and now we can import this service or actually we can first define all the things that we want and that we need inside of this service. So service is going to hold uh, one property that will be used across our application. So it will be named card, obviously, and it's going to be new behavior subject here. And you need to import it from RxJS. Okay. And the type of this uh, behavior subject, subject is going to be card. So the card model that we defined in the, uh, in the models card.model. Okay. And we need to set the default value which is going to be uh, object with empty array of items, like so. So why, how do we use this card uh, behavior subject? Uh, it's basically it holds the initial value. And once we update, for example, we add new products to the card, it just adds new values to this items array. And in every single component that we want inside of our application, we can subscribe to this behavior subject and we can receive the new values and update the UI. That's how it works. Okay, so in this card service, we want to add a snack bar, <clears throat> uh, snack bar components. So we will use private underscore snack bar and the type of this uh, service is called mat, mat snack bar, like so. So make sure to import it as well here on the top. And what this uh, component or service actually does, it displays the information to the user. So once we add the product uh, to the cart, we want to display the information that we have successfully added this product, right? So now let's add a meta method, add to cart. This is the method that we are, I, I was talking about. So this method is not going to be returning anything. So the type is going to be void because we're just going to update this cart uh, object and we're going to emit uh, but we're going to have an item received and the type of the item is going to be card item okay and make sure again to import it on the top so now we're going to create new items array and this is going to be because we don't want to affect uh, uh, this default uh, this original card object so we can destructure that object and create new array. And we can just go reference to this dot card dot value. We are accessing this behavior subject with the value dot items. Okay, like so here. And now we can find the actual item because uh, when we're adding items inside of this card, we could be adding the same product multiple times. So we just want to increase the quantity and if there is no such product inside of the cart, we just want to add it, right? So let's do that. So let's defi define const items in cart. So we are trying to find if there is a, there is this item already added in the cart. So items dot find, and here we have an item, and we're just gonna check if the item dot id is equal to the item that we passed here as argument dot id so if this find method finds an items an item it means that this is not going to be null or undefined so we can check here if if it exists if it already exists in the card in the card we just want to increase the quantity so let's just item 
or actually this is not uh, multiple this should be a singular item in, a, in cart so if item in cart is there just increase the quantity by one uh, let's use the shorthand plus equals one otherwise we want to push this to the items array so otherwise we want to else we want to use the items dot push this item okay so otherwise we are pushing this new item to this items array and all and what we want to do at, at, the, at the at this very end this dot cart we just want to emit this value so that every single component that is subscribed to the cart can catch the value so this dot cart dot next and we can emit the object with items so basically this is the exactly the same as writing items dot items but the shorthand is just to remove the key and the value and you get the same. Now, what we want to do is we want to open up the snack bar, this dot underscore snack bar. This is that service that displays the user's information. So it's very useful. And we can, uh, for the first argument, we want to pass the text, one item uh, added to cart. And as second argument, you want to pass the text that you want to show in the button. So let's say, okay. And the third argument is object, and we can set the duration of the of this uh, pop up of this snack bar. So after this amount of uh, milliseconds, it's gonna close. So let's set it to three thousand, which means three seconds. It's gonna it's gonna stand there for three seconds. Okay. And now let's just uh, console dot log uh, this dot cart dot value. Okay. So that we can see in the log what we're updating and here inside of the uh, home component we can inject the service that we just created okay so go to private cart service and import the cart service okay so it's imported on the top from source app services cart.service and now we can use this service okay so here an add to cart we are actually receiving the value here from this event from app product box okay and this pr parameter is product and the type of this is product product interface that we created as well here it's important on the top in the models product model now what we want to do is we want just to call this dot service cart service dot on add to cart and we want to pass an object okay so the product is different from the carts a uh, cart item so we want to uh, send different uh, parameters or actual properties so the product is product is product dot image uh, the name is product dot title and this is the beauty of the TypeScript. You'll get all the properties, uh, you know, show it to you. So you don't have to think about them. The price is product dot price. Quantity, quantity is going to be one because we are just adding one item and the ID is going to be product ID dot uh, ID. Okay. And if you're wondering why the naming convention of this uh, interfaces is like this is I'm, I'm mapping uh, the API that, that I'm going to be using and that we are going to be using in this tutorial uses these exact name fields so this is how I created this object so that they match the API data contracts so that's why that's the reason for it okay so now let's go and save this home component let's save the HTML file and let's try to add an item to the array so if I go and inspect, we should see uh, the value of the card. Okay, let me clear the console and enlarge so you can see it. If I click on uh, one item has been added to the card and we can close OK or actually close this after three seconds and we get log from the card service. If I expand the items, we can, we can see that inside of the items array, we get now one product and we get the old information that we passed. Now let's test. If we click again, we should get still one uh, item but it should increase the quantity to two okay let's try that 
So let's click again, one item added to the card, okay. And let's see, we again get uh, the same log from the card service. And if we expand it, we can see that the quantity has been increased to two. So this works as expected. Okay, the next thing which I wanted to do here is I want the actual card menu to be updated because as you can see, we added two products, but still it says here one. And we want to make this dynamic and to loop through all of these items and to show the actual price here. So let's do that. So where we can handle it, all of this is in the card component. So let me close all these files and let's open up the header components in the app folder and let's open up the headers here. And what we are going to have in this component is we're going to have cart, which is going to be subscribed in the home component and passed in this header uh, component. So we'll have private underscore cart, this type of cart, and let's initialize the default values. So it's going to have the items property, which is going to be an empty array at the beginning and make sure to import the cart. The another thing that, sh that we, we need is the items quantity. As you can see right now, we are displaying this static one value, but we want to update that based on the number of items and the quantity of those items in the, in the, in the cart itself. Uh, engine is not going to be used in our in this component so we can actually remove it if you want to do a little bit of cleanup and here we want to receive the actual card so we will have an input let's initialize it so make sure to import the input and we will create a getter and setter that's why I'm using the underscore the card because this is the naming convention that usually programmers do. When you have underscore card, it means that this is the private field. Okay, so we will get set here the getter. So getter card, which is type of card. And we'll just return this uh, underscore card here. So this is the getter. And now let's set the setter. So set card, fill the receive the card, which is type of card. And here we will set this card equals to the card. And also every time that card changes, we want to update this item quantity. We don't have a field for items quantity, so we need to actually uh, create this logic. So what we can do is we can we can use this item quantity and we can loop through the card items. Card items. And what we can do is first we get the object with different fields but we only need the quantity here so so what we need to do we need to app that we need to map our item and only get the array with with the quantities so item dot quantity so what we are doing here is basically using this card items uh, array and instead of the objects we are transforming that to only have the quantity and then we can use that quantity to add up and uh, get the final uh, items quantity so we can use reduce to do so and again reduce uses the previous and the current values uh, as argument and you need to set the initial value which is zero in this case and all we do is we use and add the previous value with the current value and we get uh, the, the final quantity so again we use the items array which is basically uh, array of card item objects and we transform that into array of only quantities and then we just add them up right and that's how we update the items quantity okay and now uh, what we can do is we can go to our html file and we can update uh, let me see where is our Okay, so here we have actually one items and we can update this value to be the uh, quantity items. We just copy the property name, items quantity. Like so. And for the mad badge here, we can also add this value. So it's dynamic. Okay, so at the beginning is going to be uh, always zero and we want to check if it's zero we don't want to display it so set the math 
that we can use this property for that mad badge hidden equals if if there is no item quantity so it should it should hide it <clears throat> okay let me just see okay i have a typo here i have uppercase i so let's try again and as you can see it removed uh, this icon okay what we can do here is we can check if uh do we if we have items in the cart then we want to display this this part if we don't uh we don't want to so let's add ng if basically uh we want to say ng if <coughs> if there is uh sorry cart dot items dot length like so. so only if there is cart item dot length we want to show this uh this this div and now let's loop through the card items and display this information mm. so what we can do here we can just use ng4 loop or equals let uh, item of card items and here instead of the keyboard we can use uh, item dot name and here we can use item dot quantity item dot uh, dot quantity quantity like so and here instead of the this hard-coded price we want to use the price or actually just item dot price like so okay and for the total here we want to use the get total method get total method which we actually created already in the in the uh, cart component so price cart actually item dot card dot items here card dot items uh, what we need to pass is we want to pass all the items to the get total uh, method so that it can go loop through all of them and calculate the the final value right and let's use this method let's create this method so instead of the header get total this one it will receive return actual number and it will get the uh, items items array array of items which is actually added this type of array of uh, cart item okay net card component card item okay like so and what we want to do here is showing the error because we are not returning anything what we can do is we don't want to duplicate the code that we have so we can go into pages card and card component and get this method which is already created get total here we can copy it inside of our service and access this method from two places so here we can add this method and now inside of the cart component we can call this uh, method so let's add private underscore or actually cart service and name it cart and add the type of the cart service make sure that the cart service is imported on top here and now we can instead of and defining this method we can just call this uh, card service method so return this dot card service and return the method that we just created get total and pass the items here like so and we can create this exactly the same method in the okay let's save this exactly the same method here in the header and it will receive in return uh the, the total amount okay so what it's reporting is that we haven't imported the, the card service so let's do that private card service private private means that we are going to only going to use this inside of our class component we're not going to use it inside of the html so if you want to use your services inside of the html you would avoid this private keyword okay card service and let's add the definition of the cart service and it 
and make sure again it's imported on the very top here let's save this and let's save this and the last thing that that i want to add here and since we are on the shopping cart let's add a method for removing or actually clearing the shopping cart okay so what i want to do is i want to add a new method secure on remove shopping cart so when you're on click event let's add uh, on clear cart this method is not going to receive any argument because we just want to empty the cart and emit on clear cart okay so and we want to let me save this and i want to create a service inside of the cart so that actually it can be used on multiple places okay let's go to the cart service i can remove this log that we had before and here let's cr create this method clear cart this method is not going to return anything it's not receiving any arguments so the only thing that we are doing is here is we are emitting the empty reset value for our cart so we will just Call the next with items array empty. Okay, like so. And we can display this information to the user. This.snackbar.open cart is clear. And again, let's add OK text for a button and let's set the duration, duration to 3000 milliseconds or three seconds if it's easier for you. Now let's just call this method inside of our header component here. This dot card service dot clear card. Okay, like so. And now we have completed everything except the fact that we are passing this card object. So we need to subscribe to our card service for this. Uh, actually, for this behavior subject, and we want to update our menu. As you can see right now, this is empty, but if we add something to our cart, we know that it gets added because we logged it and tested it before. But if we open up our cart, it's not getting any values. So it's because we are not sending this cart object uh, to, this, to this component. So where we need to do that is close this header component and open up the component where this header component is placed. And that's inside of the our root component. So that's inside of the just in the app component here okay we have the here app header we can remove this title we, we are not using it and we can create new cart property in the name and the type of this cart property is going to be cart and let's add the def default values like we use yeah but like we usually do so the items array like so and it's empty array now we want to implement the ng on init lifecycle hook on, on init and make sure that it's imported from the angular core and now let's implement it so here ng on init this basically method runs when the when uh, the components are starts initialization okay and we want to include our card service in the constructor so let's define the private uh, card service type of card service here and again it's being imported on the top and now when the component is initializing we want to call this dot card service and we want to subscribe to our card uh, property so subscribe there and it will receive back a card once it gets updated and all we want to do is we want to update our card property here this card is equal to card okay and now what we can do here is we can use this card and pass that to our header component and that's exactly here so card is equal to uh, card we just created okay and let's test this out so now we should get this card component updated as well so if i click we get here notification that actually we get one item added there and if we open up we can see that we have one items and it's basically sneakers quantity one and this the price and this is the total price let's try to increase the quantity 
So we have added another item. We get the quantity to two, and we actually see that we added a uh, quantity to two. So let's see if we add additional product. So let's say, or actually, I think this is enough for just testing purposes. Later, we will try with the actual data, but for now, it's 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 okay. So the next thing that I want to apply is once somebody uh, adds product to the cart, he wants to go and to view the cart. And here we want to update this cart page with the cart as well. So we need to subscribe to the cart from the cart uh, page component as well and to loop and display all this information there as well. So let's do that. So in order to do that, let's close the app component and let's open the pages folder and open up the cart component. Okay. So here we want to subscribe to our new created cart item. So let's just call this dot cart service dot cart dot subscribe. Here we get back new cart, which is type of cart. Okay. And all we want to do here is we want to update our cart with this new one. Underscore cart, okay, like so. And let's set the data source here to cart items. Okay. Let's refresh. Your cart is empty. We are not saving this into local storage. This could be a fun exercise for you guys. But for this tutorial, I'm not going to handle this in the local storage. So every time that we actually refresh, it's going to lose the state. You can fix this with local storage and sell, save all the information there. So let's add a couple of uh, items to the card. And now let's view the card. And as you can see, we got two uh, items in the, in the card and it's actually displaying now this information. So the next thing which I wanted to implement is let's implement this clear all so that we can actually clear this uh, card. So let's add this method. <clears throat> so on clear card, it's not returning anything because we just want to clear a card. And here we will just call this dot card service dot clear card. We already defined this method. Okay. <clears throat> and now we want to call this method This method on clear card once we click on the clear all. So let's find this clear all button. So it's under the actions here. And let me wrap this so you can see. View word wrap so you can see everything. And here on the button, let's add clear all. Let's add a click. Click is equal to on clear card. Now let's try again. So start shopping. Let's add one item. Let's view cart, clear, clear all, and cart is cleared. And we get the message. Okay. Okay, start shopping. So what we want to do next is let's add. So if I add some products here, view cart. So let's add this clear. So we want to remove only this row. So maybe we have a couple of items. Maybe we have like three or four products in the cart. And we want to remove the specific one. So we don't want to clear entire uh, card. So let's add that method. So let me just see where that method is. So it's on this here, on this element. Okay. And let's add a click event here. Click event. And the name of this event is going to be on remove on remove from card. Make sure it's camel case. Okay, copy that. Let's head over to the card component. And here, let's create a new method. And it's going to be called on remove from card. Okay, and actually we need to pass an element here because we want to remove only one element. So on remove from card and let's pass this element. Okay. And inside of the on remove from card, it's not going to return anything. So return type is void, but it's going to uh, receive an item, which is cart item. Okay. And we are gonna create this method inside of the service. So this dot cart service, and we'll name it remove from from cart. Remove from 
cars, like so. And we will pass an item here. Now let's define this method, the card service. Open up the card service here. And let's add this new method. It's not, it's not going to return anything. It's just going to uh, update the card object and emit that. So what we are going to do here, we're going to receive uh, item, which is type of card item, actually card item, like so. And we want to loop through the card uh, elements. So this dot card dot value dot items, and we want to filter. There are multiple ways in order to remove an item from the array, but we can use filter for this one. You can choose your own way. So basically we get uh, the item inside of the loop and we just check if the item dot ID is not equal to item dot ID. So basically all the elements, all the items in the array that are that they don't have the ID from this item are going to pass this. So we are only removing one item from the array. And we want to store this to new constant and name it filter filtered items like so okay and all we want to do ne next is we want to update this dot card dot next update the items with filtered items and we want to show corresponding message to the user did dot this dot underscore snack bar dot open and the message will be one item removed from card dot and let's add control text okay and let's add duration to 300 milliseconds or three seconds again okay okay let's save this all this stuff and we can try this now so start shopping and let's add a couple of uh, items in the into the card we can view card and we remove actually this is not going to be tested properly uh, because we only have one item in the cart but once we are added the API you can see that we are only removing the row and, it, and, it, and as you can see it works as expected one item has been removed from the cart okay the next thing that I want to implement let me just add one item again uh, so uh, what I want to add is basically I want to add uh, this quantity feature so we want to be able to update the quantity inside of our cart page so let's create that. <clears throat> so let's first uh, add the addition. So this is going to be easier. So we want to find this method for the quantity here, a quantity, and this is the button for removal, and we want the button for addition. Okay. So let's add a new event. Click, click, and on click we want to add new method which is called on add quantity okay and it will pass the element as argument so it's this element okay now let's add this okay sorry my uh, mouse is jumping around uh, let me just see on add remove from cart on on add quantity here let me copy it and let's add this method here on add quantity. So this method is, again is not returning anything, but it's accepting the item, which is a type of cart item. And this method has already been created. So we will just call this dot service cart service dot add to cart, and we'll just pass, pass an item. And it will go to this cart service and this add to cart method and it will check if this item is in the cart. If it is, it will increase the quantity. And since it's already in the cart, it should increase the quantity right away. So let's start. Start shopping. Add item to the cart. Okay. Now let's go imbue the cart and let's try. It. And yes, the quantity is getting updated as you can see. And the total uh, price is getting updated as well. The total and here the total okay the next thing which i want to add is to remove the quantity which is not working 
but let's add that. So let's go to the on add quantity and let's add new event. Let's copy this here. Let's add new click event here. And for this one, let's call it on remove quantity. On remove quantity. Okay. Like so. Let's copy it in here. Let's add this method on remove quantity. It's going to be similar uh, like the previous one. So it's going to have items, or actually, the item that is card item as argument, and it's not going to return anything. Okay, and we're gonna create new method because we don't have this method in the cart yet. So, but let's call it this dot cart service dot on, or actually just call it remove one dt. Okay, and play as the item. And let's copy this method definition and let's create new one. Okay, so let's here in the cart service, let's add new method here. And this method is going to receive new item. So just add item, just card item. And the return type is going to be void because we are not going to return anything. Okay. Now let's, uh, what we want to do here is we want to loop through the array of the item, same as we did here on the, on the, on the add to items, but we want to mark what is the quantity that we want to remove. So this dot card dot value dot items and just map we access the item inside of the array here and we want to check okay if this item dot id is equal to the past item dot ie is it if it's equal to this one so this is the item that we want to remove the quantity so here we want to remove item dot quantity. Let's use the short syntax minus minus. So here we are removing the quantity. But the one thing, there's one edge case. We want to check if the quantity is zero. So it basically means that uh, this, this item should be removed from the cart, right? So if, if we hit like zero, if, it, if we are like on five, we just hit minus minus and it's four and that's fine. We're good to go but if we are like on one and we hit minus minus we hit the zero and it means that this product needs to be removed uh, from the card so what we can do is again check here if item dot quantity is equal 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 to zero we can actually mark this uh, item for removal so let's create another uh, variable let item for removal and we, this is going to be card type of card item or undefined okay so if if this is the if the quantity is zero item for removal is equal to item okay and then once we updated this we can just return the item mapped item return like so so here we are mapping the this array and basically we are updating the quantity property. And once we map uh, this array, we want to store this inside of the variable. So let's call it let uh, filtered items, like so. And now we want to check if we mark any items for removal. And we will call the method that we already created for removing the item from the cart, right? So if there's item for removal called this dot uh, remove from cart and pass in filtered items or actually yes I don't no, actually we need to pass the item for removal so it's this one okay because we only want to pass one one uh, argument one property <clears throat> and we want to update the filtered items okay with the results that we have and filtered items is returning an error but it's not accessible to cart item okay let's see so what is not assignable to filter item so what we can do here is we can set the type or actually we are not returning anything from the cart 
So that's why it's uh, showing us the error. So we need to return something from the card here. Okay. Uh, another thing that I want to do here is not only that I want to remove from the card, but I also don't want to duplicate the notifications. So as you can see, if we add the notifications here, like this dot score snack bar dot open. one item removed from the card and let's click let's add the ok and the duration inside of the configuration object duration to 300 milliseconds you can see here and we also want to uh, obviously this dot uh, dot card to emit the new value right this dot next and we want to emit the items filtered items okay but the problem with this is you're calling this remove card and it's also notifying the user. So what we can do is we can send a flag. So uh, like so, add a flag, do we want to notify the users or not? And add here on property, so notify or even update, update, which is equal by default to true. And here we can check if if we want to update, then uh, update the card and send the notification. Otherwise, we will get two notifications. And we also need to re uh, to return something so that we actually get this value, right? Okay, so we just need to return from the remove from card these filtered items. Okay, so return filtered items. So it means that we are returning array of cards item, like so. And now it should work. If we save it, let's try now. So start shopping. Let's add a couple of items in the card, actually seven of them. And now if we go, let's try minus, we are reducing the quantity. In plus, we are increasing the quantity. And let's see what happens if we hit the zero. Boom, it empties the shopping cart. And with this, we have covered most of the use cases that you wanted for our shopping cart. And the last piece of our application is left to be done is basically, we want to implement the APIs. So let's do that next. So let me close all these files and we need to create another service. And this service is going to handle the API request to this uh, fake store API. So in case you missed it, we are going to be using fake store API and the links to this API is going to be in the description, obviously. And I highly advise you, advise you to go into read the docs. There are much, much uh, more properties and more endpoints that we are going to be using in this tutorial but just in case you want to check and maybe you want to build your own version of the uh, store you can go and check it out it's uh, the good thing about this uh, fake store api it's really easy to access all the data that we need and uh, the simplicity is what you want especially when you're just learning all these uh, topics okay now let's open up the terminal and we are in the in the services folder and what we can do is we can uh, go and type in ng generate service and name it as store this is going to be uh, actual uh, store service yes so click enter and it will take a couple of seconds to make it and once again we want to go and import this service inside of the providers array into the app module so here store type in store service and make sure it's imported on the top here now let's close it open up the store service the service that we just created here okay so here what we want to do is we want to import the http client first so this is the client that we're going to use in order to fetch the data so add the private http client and the type is http client here and it's getting imported on the top from the angular common http 
and let's add the base URL for our uh, API request. So add a constant store underscore dash base underscore URL. And the URL is HTTPS, which is the secure protocol, or four slash four slash fake store api.com. Okay. Like so. And we want to create a get all products method and this method is going to receive two arguments the first one is the limit and set the default limit to 12 and the second argument is going to be sort which is going to be the default sorting which is going to be this which stands for uh, descending right the return type of this uh, of this method is going to be observable and make sure to import that from the rxjs and this observable is going to return the type of product array. So array product. And again, uh, make sure to import this product from on the very top. It's showing the error because we are not returning anything at the moment. So, but we're going to fix that just in a second. So return this.htp client. And we're going to use get method here. And this get method is going to return array of product here oops not that just array of product here let's copy that okay let me just type it in array of product okay like so and then inside of the uh, parentheses let's add the first argument is the url of of the api so let's use the base URL, uh, store base URL, and then you, you just use the four slash products. Okay, with this you will get all the, uh, the, the products, but we want to apply the limit and we want to apply the sort as well. So what we can do here, we can add a question mark sort is equal to, and uh, let's add the sort. And we can also add a limit, so a limit, is equal to limit okay and with this we can get our products and the place where we are going to call this is actually in the home page component so open up we just shrink down this window and open up the home page component and here inside of the ng on init we're gonna call this uh, call this method but first let's create uh, the variable where we're gonna store this so we're going to store this inside of the product a variable and it's going to be the property type array of product okay and at the beginning it's going to be undefined so that's why you need to pass the undefined type as well here uh, we need to sort variable as well and the, the default value is desk descending and the count this is basically uh, the number of items that we want to display right so let's set it to 12 which is default one okay. okay and we want to have an production uh, products uh, subscription okay. products subscription uh, variable this variable is going to contain our subscription and once we destroy the component we want to remove anything because we don't have, we don't want to have any memory leaks I will show you how to do that. So the type of this is going to be subscription. You can import it from RxJS here. Like so. And at the beginning, it's going to be undefined. Okay. Now we want to import our service inside of the constructor. So here, let's add a comma, private uh, store service and type is store service. Okay. And again, make sure to, to import that from our services folder here on top. And now inside of the ng on init, we can call this this dot get products. And we will create this method so that we can call it a couple of times when you're changing the filters the, and the other, uh, other sorting and uh, showing the columns menu uh, functions. So let's create this get products 
method and this method is not returning anything or receiving so it's just going to <coughs> update the products here so uh, this dot let's call this dot store service dot get all products and what we want to pass in is we want to pass this dot uh, count and this dot sort sort okay like so and then we want to subscribe to this method and once we receive the products products we want to update our products property so this dot products equals to underscore products like so and don't forget the products uh, subscription so what we want to do is we want to store this subscription to this variable so use this dot subscription product subscription and equal to this and now what we want to do is we want to implement ng on destroy <coughs> on destroy and make sure to import the on destroy here on top it's reporting the error because we are not implementing ng on destroy and we are said that we are so what you want to do here is ng on destroy and it's not returning anything so we got this nice auto completion and we just want to check if this dot uh, products subscription exists so if we created this subscription we want to unsubscribe this dot product subscription dot unsubscribe otherwise if you navigate to home page and card page for a couple of times you may end up creating a couple of subscriptions and uh, you will result in memory leaks and that's something that you don't want to have on your application especially as your application grows you may start losing uh, keep, uh, start losing the track of it so what we want to do now is we want to use the app products box here basically and we want to loop uh, to the array of the products that we just fetched here actually we may end up with an error because i don't see my layout so let me see uh, what we actually got here Oh, actually it's reporting that we haven't injected http client inside of our http uh inside of our app module so what we what we need to do uh basically we are using inside of our store service we're using this http client but it's not imported inside of our uh, application so what we need to do is we need to go to the imports array and import the http http client module here and now we can use the HTTP requests. Close that. And our up, now our application is back. We can go to the uh, home component. Let me close the store component. And let's use this products array. And now let's go to the HTML file and let's make this dynamic product box. So on the math grid tile, let's implement the ng4. And you for and let's product create product variable of products and what we want to do is we want to pass this product to our app product uh, component so here product is equal to product now let's go to the app product box which is in the components folder product box here and we want to add an input for this product so here we are hard coding this but we want to remove it and we want to uh, create this as an input okay now we can save this and save this and we should get our products here so let's see if, if this works okay i see uh, this works uh, because we are getting uh, some more products that we've created but actually the only thing which is missing is on our product box we're using the static data that's a problem so what we need to do is instead of creating this uh, static data, we can actually use the product that we just got. So let's do that. Here in the source, we can use okay, we can use product product dot image. For the H5, we can use this is the category. So call it product dot category. Okay, let's save that up 
Okay, so product image is not possible because object is undefined. So what we want to do here is we want to check if we do get the product or not. Otherwise, or we can even check, uh, we can check on two places. So one, one of the places where we can check, we can check here. So basically we can do ng if product. So this way, there's not going to be a chance that this product is undefined. As, as you can see here, we're, get, we're getting the images and we're getting the categories. The sneakers is a snack bar. So it's a chocolate snack bar, it's not a shoes. So this is wrong naming, everything is wrong. So let's fix that up. How we can do this is we can access the property of product dot uh, name. This is the name of the product. Let's change the view to the word wrap so you can see everything. For the description, we can add, okay, let me just see product name. So property name doesn't exist on type product. Okay, this is a good thing of the TypeScript. So let's see what is the name of the actual product. Uh, the name is the title actually. Okay, so product.title. Then for the description, as you can see, now it works. And you can see now that we have that trunc truncate uh, class. It's working. So we have this very large title. And so it's cutting this off. And once we hover over, it shows the entire title. Okay. So what is left to be done? So once we switch over on, on one, uh, one, product per row layout, we get this description, which is static right now. So let's fix this. Okay. Let me just increase the, this layout. Okay, like so. And so for the description, we want to use the product.description here and close the brackets. And for the price, we want to use the product.price product.price like so and let's test now how it works okay as you can see we are getting these prices different now so we are getting these titles we are getting this uh these categories and if we and if we change the layout mode we get the description as well here obviously the format of the images is not exactly the same in every product so that's why we get these inconsistencies but I don't mind that, to be honest. Okay, so this is the, the different layout. And let, now let's test if we add different products to our uh, card item. So you can see we had a couple of items, we added four of them. And you can see we get the description, we get the title, we get the the total amount that we are, uh, that we are supposed to pay. So if you go and click on view card, we can actually see that we get all this product updated into the card. And here we can update the quantity, like, like I said. Uh, and we can remove the quantity here and we can remove the one item per row and we can also clear the card Let's test that out here And we can now ret return back So uh, the thing which I wanted to implement next is actually let me just show you So the thing that we want to implement is once we click on the sort description or Sort by descending or ascending or when we click on show uh, 12 or 24 or 36 we want to fetch again all these products and uh, send different parameters so what we need to do is we need to go to the home component here and inside of the home component we want to catch this sort and count being changed so the actual component that holds this count and sort is the actual app products header so here in the app products header, you're changing these values and we need to emit these values. So let's open this uh, file in here. Basically we have this sort and item show count. We want to create this as output. So let's create two outputs and emit these values. So we can just copy paste this a couple of times and let's rename this to items count change. And the last one is going to be sort change. And it's going to emit the string type. Okay. So when we change when we change the sort, we want to emit the new value. So this dot uh, sort change dot emit. And we want to emit the new value, which is basically new sort. Okay. 
and on the uh, items count change yes we want to emit new value so this dot items count change emit new value so account like so and don't forget to emit this value okay and now we can catch this item counts count change and sort change inside of our home component so let's go to the home component and here let's change the view to word wrap okay and let's add two more events okay and let's copy paste the name of the event so the one the first one is items count change okay so this is the basically when you're changing this item count so to 12 24 36 so basically we, we need to set the limit to the request uh, items count change and then we want to call the method on items count change event and let's create this method here inside of the home component and let's add it here on the bottom on items count change this method is not going to return anything so it's going to be void but what is going to be it's going to receive a new description so description is going to be a type of string or actually not description sorry this is going to re re uh, receive the count which is going to be a number and we want to update this dot count is equal to count or we can rename this to new count so that we don't have the overlap for the new count like so and we want to okay so it says that it's not assignable to string so what we can do see here is we can change this to string okay so we can change this format from number to a string and then we can call again this dot get products so what we are doing here is basically we are updating the can count variable and we are calling this get products a method which actually uses this dot count and this dot sort on the second method we want to update the sort and again call this product so let's take this sort change okay home so this is new event sort change and we will create new method on sort change which will also send the sorting new sorting value copy this save it and let's create this new one so on sort change and we will have new sort which is type of string it doesn't return anything so the return type is void and we will update this dot uh, the name of the property is if you want to update is sort this dot sort is equal to new sort okay and then again we want to call this dot get all products because we want to uh, fetch again and with this uh, let's test it out and let's open the console so that we can see if uh, we what is the the, the actual values from the network tab okay let's refresh the page okay and we get the first uh, initial request which actually sends the sort as description and limit to 12. what if we set the limit to let's say 24 it refreshes the page and sends the new request which is fixer api products sort is again description and the limit now is 24. what if we change the value to the ascending it refreshes the page again it sends another request and now the sort is ascending the limit is 24. so as you can see this is dynamic and these filters work as expected uh, the next thing which we want to do is we want to use these categories so as you can see this is static now so we want to fetch all the categories uh, that we have and we want to once we click on this category we want to display only the items and the products from that category so let's do that we need to open up uh, the services and let's open up the store service okay so we need to get uh, so we need to add another method here so the name of this method is get all categories 
and this method doesn't return doesn't uh, accept any parameters but it returns an observable observable and the type of this observable is array of strings array of strings okay like so so we want to return this dot http client dot get and uh, this get method it will return again array of strings okay like so and then inside of the uh, get method we want to pass the base url which is store store base url and then we want to add for slash products for slash categories like so okay now we can close this store service and we want to go in, inside of the uh, home component and we have filters inside of these filters we want to include this uh, store service here and as you can see as you can see we are hard coding the categories here so we want to make this dynamic so include the private service uh, store service store service and make sure again to import it on the top and here inside of, inside of the ngon init this dot store uh, service dot get all categories call this method okay and then we want to just update these categories so these categories actually needs to be undefined at the beginning so it's array of strings and, or undefined like so and what we want to do here we are basically getting we need to subscribe here dot subscribe and when we get the response back response back we just want to update the product the categories array this dot categories equals to response okay and also don't forget that we want to create category subscription variable so that we can unsubscribe once we leave the home page so let's name it categories categories subscription and this is type of subscription imported from rxjs and we want to assign this variable here category subscription uh, again let's implement ng on destroy on destroy here and let's add it on the very bottom ng on destroy and we just want to check if this uh, subscription exists if this dot category subscription exists if it's if it's not undefined and actually it's showing the error because it doesn't have an initializer and that's why because at the beginning it's undefined so if it exists we want just to unsubscribe from it this dot uh, category subscription dot unsubscribe like so okay and basically this component should be working now as you can see we get all these values but now we need to catch this uh, event emitter that we are em emitting these categories inside of our home component and update let me just close this file and this file actually let me just see what is the type of the event so inside of the filters the event is show category so we want to when we click on the category here button click on the category we are basically emitting this value here and we want to catch that inside of the home component so inside of the home component we have this show category actually we have already this this method created so this show category and we are updating this category so now what we want to do is we want to call this get products here this dot get products like so but the only thing that we that we are missing inside of this get products is we are missing this category so this dot let me change the word wrap so this dot category so that we can actually apply this category to the actual request so now we need to need to change our get all products uh, method here and we need to add additional property so let's add property which is called category and make it 
as optional. That's why we add this question mark and the type of this is just string. Okay. And now let's add here. So, so here actually after the products, we want to add uh, another expression. So we want to check if there is a category string. If there's category string. We want to add for slash category and just add this category. Otherwise, we want to pass an empty string like so. So basically what we're doing here, uh, just change the word wrap. So what we're doing here is just, we are just checking if there's category. If it is, we're adding the category uh, namespace and the category itself. Otherwise, we just return the string. So it, the API endpoint remains the same. So let's test that out. So if you click on the categories, and let's say we click on the men's clothing. And as you can see, we only get these products for the men's clothing. If you click on jewelry, we get only the jewelry. If you click on the electronics, you only get the electronics. And it's, it works as expected. And the last piece of the puzzle is to integrate the payment and the checkout and the actual ordering flow. So like I said at the beginning of this video is that you need to go on stripe.com and you just need to go and to create your account. So just go to stripe.com and you need to sign up here. So I already signed up and once you are signed up and signed in, you can go to the dashboard. And once you access the dashboard, there's a section for the developers. So here on the right top, you can click on the developers. And in the test mode, you need to activate your account in order to get the real live data. So here we have the API keys that we are going to be using inside of our application in order to integrate uh, the Stripe. Okay, so let's start doing the implementation. Let me close all of these uh, files. And the first thing that we wanna do is we want to install a Stripe.js package that we are going to be using. So make sure that you're inside of the root folder and then let's do npm install. Let me just shrink down this window, npm install at stripe for slash stripe dash js and the version is going to be 1.35.0 like so it will take a couple of seconds to install okay so once again make sure that you're installing the correct version and the same version as i'm doing here uh, now we need to include the stripe as well inside of the index.html file. So make sure to go to the basically source folder and target the index.html file. And we want to include this inside of the head. So add a script like so, and just add a source. HTTPS forward slash forward slash js.stripe.com and version three. And this way we have included uh, the stripe into our application. Okay, I can close the index, index.html file. Let me open up the terminal now and let me just restart our server. Now we need to go to the checkout page. So open up the pages, cart, actually cart page, not the checkout page. And here we have checkout button on the very bottom here, proceed to the checkout. So we want to create a method that will call this checkout. So here on click, call on checkout method. So let's call this method here inside of the card component and let's add it on the very bottom. What we can do is we will add this method on the card service itself. So this method doesn't return anything. So the type is going to be void and we need to include the HTTP client here. What we can do, we can also extract this call to the, uh, to the service uh, separated, a different service, but we can include it into this one as well. So let's call it private uh, HTTP. Now we are just including the HTTP client, HTTP client here and make sure again that it's imported just enlarge it make sure that it's imported on top here and now inside of our on checkout 
what we're going to do is we want to call the Stripe service. And let me show you. So we are first making the post request. So this dot HTTP, HTTP dot HTTP client. So we are targeting this uh, service and make the post request. And the post request that we are going to make is going to be the request to our local server server that is going to handle this post request and make a request by itself on the uh, Stripe. Then it will return the session ID and using that session ID, we can open up the checkout page. So you will see. Uh, the URL of this request is going to be HTTP. It's going to be our local uh, server. So local host, and we are gonna open that up on the port 42442, like so and slash checkout okay and inside of the object we want to uh, to pass items so this dot card dot items and we can handle these items inside of the server and send that to the stripe okay and once we get the response back so once we uh, receive something from the server we can subscribe to it and this is going to be async operation and the result uh, we will put the type of any because we don't have any type definition here defined it's a little bit outside of the scope of this tutorial so first we need to load the stripe so let's stripe is equal await and this is why this is an async operation because we need to load the stripe here inside of this uh, subscribe uh, subscribe uh, scope so we need to use the load stripe uh, method from the uh, package that we installed so make sure to import here import load stripe from add stripe uh, strap dash js so this is the method that we are using to load the stripe and inside of the parentheses we need to pass the key that we have on our dashboard so once again go to the stripe.com and to the dashboard and go to your dashboard once you're logged in go to the developers tab and api keys and the key that we need is this publishable key and click to copy set copied obviously you need to copy your own key it needs to be different than mine obviously and let me close this and once we load the stripe what we can do is we can use the stripe and uh, we can call the method redirect to checkout and how we do that is from the session itself uh, on the server we will return a uh, session id and we just need to pass a session id and that's how we open the, the checkout so session id is going to be result here that we respond back and we will just return an id there like so okay and now let me save this checkout now in order this to work obviously we need to create a local server and run it on the port 4242 and create this post uh, endpoint checkout so let's do that okay let me create a new folder inside of the inside of the root so just create a new folder and name it server okay and let me initialize we need a new node.js application so let me just see where we are at we are in the root folder okay so cd into server here inside of the server folder we want to initialize new node application so, so run npm init and dash y so we don't want any sub questions we just want to initialize the plain uh, node.js uh, application and here we need to install three things so we want to use express.js uh, a framework for our node application we want to install the course because we are going to create some uh, cross-origin resource requests and we want to install the stripe obviously so let's run npm install course a version is going to be 2.8.5 uh, the next one is express and the version is going to be 4.18.1 and the last one is stripe and the version is 10.7.0 okay and let me close this card components and let me open up our new 
server folder. Okay, let op let's open up the package.json file. And, uh, and as you can see, we have created this new project and installed our three dependencies here. So now what we need to do is we need to create our, our main file. So let's name it server.js, like so. Okay. And now inside of this, this server, let's create our application. So first we need to include the libraries that we need. The, the good thing about this server as and Stripe is that they already built a couple of pages like success pages, redirect, cancel, all these pages for us. So we, we will later on just download these assets and place them in the public folder. And once we complete the ordering, we can redirect users uh, to these pages. So we don't have to build that part. I mean, you could, but this is easier and more faster. Okay. First, import the express. So const express this require express. The next one which we want to import is course. Otherwise, if you don't import and use the course, it will get an error when you're trying to make the cross origin requests. So this one requires course. And the next one is body parser. So this one is for, for parsing body, uh, the, the data that we're sending between the servers. So as it, as it tells by its name, body parser, and it requires body dash parser. Okay, like so. So now what we can do, we need to initialize our application, const app is equal express, and we just call the express without any arguments there. The next thing, okay, the next thing that I want to do is I want to set the app to use the, the public folder. So let's create a new folder, public, and let me open up the Stripe checkout flow. So let me show you this. So like I said, they already have checkout flow built in. So let's explore this. As you can see, they have already built all of this. And so you don't have to do this, these kind of things and spend your time into building like success page and um, maybe a fail failure page. So you can go and click here on the top explore the documents and you can go on quick start here. And once you're here, you basically can just copy paste all this entire code if you want to, but I can just go and download this. And we can use the checkout success and cancel HTML files and just include them inside of our public folder. Okay. Just make sure it's downloaded. Okay, so we have downloaded it here. And now I can use this public folder and extract it, okay? Actually, I need to open up revealing the file explorer. It would be good that it can work directly from the zip file, but it doesn't. So let's remove the public folder and let's just include this public folder here. Okay, so in this public folder, we have this cancel HTML, checkout HTML and success HTML file. We will actually only use the cancel and success. The checkout HTML file is not going to be used in this tutorial. So let's close this checkout page. And now inside of the our Express application, app.use, we want to use this folder. So in order in order to access uh, this uh, these assets from the public folder, we need to call express.static and pass the name of the folder, which is public. Okay, like so. Now we need to set the body parser. So call the app.use and call the body parser and set the URL encoded to extended as false. This basically uh, extended is by default uh, true. So it enables the objects and arrays to be encoded inside of the URL, which we don't want. So let me just copy paste this one. And also what we want to do is we want to create JSON JSON uh, application. We want to use the application slash JSON for for app, obviously. And now let's use the course. So we need to set up app. So app that use and call the course. We need to set the origin. So basically, we are enabling course here origin true, and we want to enable the headers as well. Otherwise, they will be omitted. So set the credentials to true as well. Like so. 
And now let's in, let's load the stripe. So const stripe is equal is equal to require. And now here we need to include the code and the token from the stripe itself. So here we need to call the stripe method. We're requiring stripe, and then we are calling the method with the key. So once again, let's go to the stripe.com. Here and let's go to the dashboard. Let's go to the developers in API keys and we need to open up this secret key. So reveal test key and we can click to copy. We can close this now and we can pass this key here to our server. Okay, like so. Obviously, like I said, you need to create your own servers and you need to create your own keys, right? You don't, please don't use mine. Okay, and now let's create a new post endpoint. So app.post, okay. And the name of this request like we created inside of the checkout. So if we go to the public folder and, sorry, here inside of the source, app, pages, cart, and here we created this checkout endpoint. So let's use that here, let's check out. And this is going to be async uh, callback. So here we have re request, we have response, and we have the next, which will handle the errors in case anything comes up. So let's build try catch block here. You get this auto completed from the IntelliJ, uh, sorry, from the uh, Visual Studio code. And we will create a session variable which we will use to pass that back to our request here in the cart and we will pass back the id from the session so that we can open up <coughs> checkout okay so what what we are going to do here is basically we are calling the stripe so we are call await on stripe dot checkout uh, check checkout dot sessions okay and you call the create method create like so and we need to, we need to pass an object in inside of this object we will pass uh the data about our product that we want to to you know to buy so the first argument is line underscore items and here we will use the request that we got and the body so request dot body and we will send as you can see here from our client here from our client we are sending items so we can access the items here request body dot items and what we want to do is we want to map uh, this array okay so here we can ac access the item and what we will return here is a new object and inside of this object, let me just make an implicit return. Okay. So you just surround this by the parentheses and this is implicit return. And now inside of the object, <coughs> set the currency, currency to be uh, USD, like so. Set the product underscore data to be Okay, new object, and inside of this object, we want to pass the name and the images. So the name is going to be item.name, and the images, we actually have only one image. So images, but it accepts the array of images. So use the item.product. Okay. okay, like so. And this is for product data. Uh, then we need to send a unit amount. So this is the quantity unit underscore amount. Actually, unit amount is the actual price. So we go to item dot price, and we need to, we need to multiply that with, with uh, one hundred because they use that in cents, and we we want to use that in dollars. Okay, <clears throat> and okay, let me close this. The next uh, parameter that we need to send is the mode. 
so the mode needs to be payment there are multiple ways uh, there are multiple modes actually and there are subscriptions one-time payments and this is actually one-time payment so th that is what we are setting here <clears throat> and the next thing is the success URL success underscore URL so once the payment has been done successfully we will redirect the user uh, to this URL and actually let me make this double code quotes as well so that we have a same standard and the USD here so let's use the double quotes here always okay so success url is going to be the <coughs> uh, the success html file from our public folder so called http uh, colon four slash four slash local host 4242 and then success.html okay and then we want to add cancel URL as well cancel underscore URL and just add the cancel file what you can do now is you can obviously go and update the success HTML file for example here it says mail to orders as example we can do collab or code dot it dot slova you know at gmail gmail.com like so and copy paste this as well so that we have custom success page you can make this much better obviously but this is just this this, this will do it right and instead of the catch error uh, we just want to pass the error back so call the next and we actually need to to catch the error here and just pass the error back like so and the last thing I forgot to do is basically we want to return back, like I said, the session. So use the response dot status. Use the status 200 and respond in the JSON format and just set in the session. Okay. So we are sending this session entirely here. And, and the last part actually, which I forgot is to open up the port and open up the actual application. So app.listen. And the port that we said that we're going to be using 424242. And what we want to do is we just want to console log. Log f is running on 424242. Just 4242. Okay. And now we can open up the terminal and start our application. Inside of the server, run node and name of the file is server.js app is running on 424240 okay and our client app is running as well so let's try it let me refresh our application let's select a couple of products here open up the card let's go to the card page here let's continue proceed to the checkout Okay, this can, this can take a couple of seconds. Let me open that inspect tool in case we have some errors. Okay, we are getting some errors, so let me just see. And if we open up the console log, we can see that the request hasn't been correct. So let me see the server, what it says. Okay, let's see, we are getting some errors. So item is not defined, we are getting... Okay, received unknown parameters, unit amount. Okay, so obviously we have sent, been sending the wrong uh, format so what we can do is we can open up the stripe documentation here and we can just copy paste the correct format so inside of the, here inside of the align items let's just copy paste this object okay so here line items it's basically this object let's replace it here okay and now, okay, let me just see, we're mapping here, we're closing, we need another brackets, so make sure that you have right spelling. Okay, and now for the currency, USD, for the name, we will use item.name, for the images, like we said, we have only one image, so use the item.product inside of the array. Okay, for the unit amount, we will use 
item dot price and we will increase it by 100 and for the quantity we want item dot quantity like so let me restart the server okay load server app is running on 4242 okay let me move this here and now let me refresh to see what we get so if i go now at the bottom we have proceed to the checkout if i click on that here okay it's loading and now we get uh, our checkout page so as you can see we have these products we have the total amount and we have all this information to fill in so we can type in just test email gmail.com for the testing uh, you need to use 424242 uh, then for the month doesn't doesn't matter for csv doesn't matter name on the card slova and let's click pay no thanks i don't want to save okay we appreciate your business and they basically we got the checkout page okay this is expired link because my uh, accidentally uh click on back but if we go to stripe the dashboard we should check out and see if we got this payment processed so let's go to the dashboard let's go to the payments here and this is the last one and as you can see we got our products in the dashboard uh, and these are the details so slova test gmail and all of this so what we can do next, next is let me open up our application again local school local host 4000 okay let me just change the pro protocol to remove the secure one okay so what we can do here is we can integrate the shipping so it is we have integrated the, the payments but if you're ordering something you want to integrate the shipping as well so this is like just a donation uh, but if you want to add shipping options so you can go to the documentation of the stripe you have here stripe docs payments checkout and the shipping and what we can do we, we can just pass these shipping options right <clears throat> so let me see uh we have added these line items and let me just copy this entire part because you can customize it but you don't have to so let's copy it entirely and let's see okay so here before the line items let's copy this shipping details like so and if you want to customize something you can easily do that so but basically the options are regular so here you can update like the shipping countries here is at the us and canada shipping options as you can see we have like the fixed amount this is like free shipping so the amount is zero the second option is to have uh shipping for 1500 usd dollars and you have like display name all these properties you can alter if you want so let me just in that this code okay like so so let's try this now let's save this let's restart our server okay app is running and now let's test it what we can do here let's select jewelry let's add a couple of products like so let's go to the card your card let me open up the console so we can go proceed to the checkout here and let's see okay we do get now the shipping as well so as you can see on the, on the, on the left side we do have all the products that we created and the total view and the shipping is free okay we have you know two options free shipping and next day sir so if you click on the next day sir you get 15 dollars if you click on free shipping it will take five or seven uh business days so for the email we can test we test at test.com name slova uh address one test address two test for the city new york zip code Virginia this is all random obviously and for the card information 424242 just 42 okay you can enter whatever you want here for the CV and 
if we want to go to pay, let's see, I don't want to think, uh, to save, it's processing, it should be successful. We appreciate your business. If you have any questions, please email code with logo. I want to save this. And if I go now to the, to the stripe.com here, let's open up the dashboard again. And let's see under the payments, here we have the last transaction and here you can see all the information so his key are the owner information the address where you want to ship your uh, order and everything looks as expected so with this we have actually completed our application so let me so let me navigate back and let me review what we have created in this tutorial so basically what we did is we created this home page with all of these products which we can uh, sort by ascending or descending. Uh, we also created this menu where we can choose different number of items that you want to display on our current page. We also have the options to change the layout depending on how we want to look. And we also have the options and the filters on the left side to filter our categories, like Tony's jewelry, men's clothing, and so on. Uh, also there are options, obviously, because this is a store to add these items to the cart. We can open the cart and preview what we have there. We can clear the cart, so this is now empty. Then again, if you want to proceed and buy some new things, we can add them. Then we can proceed to the checkout, just click on the green. And here on the checkout, uh, we have a list of all the items that we added to the cart. We can increase the quantity. We can remove the quantity if you want, and just, let's say, buy only this one. Men, casual, slim fit. Uh, uh, this t-shirt and we can proceed to the checkout if you click on proceed to the checkout if you click on proceed to the checkout we get this checkout form where we can uh, enter all the shipping details and the card information and we can uh, submit that to our uh, stripe dashboard and with this we basically build our e-commerce store i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you learned something new well that's all for this angular video stopping by and don't forget to subscribe code with sloba thank you for watching the entire video to see more angular tutorials click here